voted against it. Speaking of Rand Paul, he's going to New Jersey next week, but Chris Christie will not be there to greet him. Chris Christie says he already has plans to be celebrating his wife's 50th birthday, and she's more important to him than Rand Paul is. <laughs> he's right. That also has <laughs> echoes or whatever, uh, uh, ramifications for 2016. All of that coming up right here. Stay with us on The Bill Press Show. This is The Bill Press Show. major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making Home Affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 69222. Did you see the world differently? Did you celebrate the victory? So today, I state clearly and with conviction, America's commitment to seek the peace and security of a world without nuclear weapons. Did you stand up against our greatest threat? On your TV and online, this is The Bill Press Show. President Obama says, hey, it ain't my red line. Uh-uh. The world drew it. I didn't. What do you say? Good morning, everybody. Thursday, September 5. Uh, can you believe it? 
Here we are. That's what happens when you start out with a short week and you start your week on Tuesday. The week goes by pretty fast. <laughs> Great to see you today. Thank you for joining us. It is the Bill Press Show. We are live on your local progressive talk radio station and proud to be there. Thank you for joining us this Thursday morning. We are live on online on your video stream at youtube.com slash talker tv t-a-w-k-r tv uh and thank you those of us uh, those of you joining us uh, online and uh next monday starting next monday we will be live on free speech tv uh either on the dish network or direct to tv so you got all kinds of ways of joining us and we're very very happy that you have because we got lots to talk about uh, coming to you live from our nation's capital, uh, Congress and the House, uh, the House and the Senate, rather, officially, officially still on uh, vacation, and most members are out. Uh, but you never know it because uh, a lot of members have come back to town, and there've been committee hearings and protests and business as usual, almost on Capitol Hill this week, all related around Syria, while the president is in Sweden and goes to St. Petersburg today for the G20 summit. Wherever it's happening here in our nation's capital, around the country, around the globe, we got it covered. We'll tell you all about it and give you a chance to sound off about it by phone at 866-55-PRESS. That's our toll-free number. Online, uh, at uh, on Twitter, rather, at BP Show, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash Bill Press Show. Hey, look who's here. The team, uh, Peter Ogburn and Dan Henning. Hey, hey. Good morning. Happy All New right. Year. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Alicia Cruz on the phones. How about it? And Cyprian Balding, those of you watching online, thanks, Cyprian, for keeping the video cams in uh, good shape. Yesterday, just down the street from us here, just uh, just a uh, uh, block or so below the uh, U.S. Capitol, Vice President Joe Biden showed up yesterday to swear in new Labor Secretary Tom Perez. He's been on the job now for two or three weeks. In yeah, fact, he's yeah. been in in our studio. He took over officially already. in mid July, actually. Was it that long yeah. ago? Yeah, yeah, mid July. But he hasn't uh, hadn't been sworn in yet officially. Uh, it happened yesterday, and Joe Biden says he's a guy who's out there fighting for working men and women. He's never forgotten what got him engaged in the process in the first place to give decent, decent, ordinary Americans. Like his mom and dad, like my mom and dad, like a shot. Give him a shot. And Don Perez says, we are not the Department of Labor. We're the Department of Opportunity. The Department of Labor is the Department of Opportunity. And as we emerge from the, most, the worst recession of our lifetime, I will make it my top priority to expand opportunity in a number of different ways. Yep. Syria dominates the discussion this morning. Dylan Byers from Politico, media critic media, senior media reporter, who we're here to talk about how the media is handling this uh, war talk. Uh, Cindy Boren. We'll talk sports with Cindy Boren from the uh, Washington Post and reporters from USA Today and BuzzFeed and The Atlantic all joining us. But first, this is the Full Court yes. Press. Other headlines making news on this Thursday in sports. Football is back. The 2013 NFL season kicks off in Denver tonight where the Super Bowl champion Baltimore Ravens visit the Denver Broncos. Quarterback Joe Flacco starts the season with that fat new contract thanks to the championship win. But he's got a tough test against veteran quarterback Peyton Manning. Normally, the Super Bowl champs get to kick off the season in their own yeah, stadium, yeah, so. but the Ravens cannot tonight because the Baltimore Orioles have a home game. There is not enough barking for fans, right. and the owner of the Baltimore Orioles refused to move his game. Oh. Uh, what's that guy, Peter? Peter Angelos. Yeah. Peter Angelos, yeah, he's a he's real. The, I think he's the age. second most hated uh, man behind Dan Snyder around yeah. these parts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sofia Vergara earned about $30 million in the last year. That makes the modern family actress the top-earning television actress for the year uh, for a period ending in June. That figure includes several endorsements along with her acting salary. Uh, Law, and Order, Marisca, uh, Law and Order's Mariska Hargitay and Big Bang Theory actress Kaylee Cuoco are tied for second on the list. Way back, though, they only earned $11 million each. I'd settle for 11. Yeah, I'd be all right that. with that. I can deal with that. 
Move over, Apple. Samsung grabbed the spotlight yesterday by revealing its new smartwatch, something many thought Apple would do first. Galaxy Gear is, voice con- is a voice-controlled watch that you wear on your wrist, connects to your phone, it can make calls, take pictures, display text messages, and emails. Also, it tracks physical activity, manages music, has over 60 apps. The screen is just over an inch and a half wide. I don't know. About yeah, I'm this. with you. I don't know. You know, I don't hate it as much as I hate the idea of Google Glass. Yeah, but I still don't know. Just you know, oh, let me read my email. Just look at your watch. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. really not saying that as a hater. I right. just don't. I just don't know if I could get used to this. You know, looking at my wrist. I've stopped wearing a watch. Yeah. I'm not sure I'm going to start wearing it. Wearing wearing one. I start wearing the watch because I just depend on this so much. You know what? All you need is an iPhone and some duct tape, and you basically... <laughs> that's look, what, look, I've got a new iWatch. Oh, but, <laughs> no, but you don't understand. That's what Samsung has done. They yeah. put out a little kit. It's a roll of duct tape <laughs> and a smartphone. <laughs> look, we made a watch. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look at my watch. It's a do-it-yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, no. Yeah, that that's a big joke. But no joke about Syria yesterday. Active, uh, a lot of action yesterday on many fronts, and uh, here's where I want to lead up to today. I want you to tell me, because I haven't heard it yet, I want you to tell me one good reason, one good reason for not acting. One good reason for not uh, sending a military strike against um, Bashar al-Assad for using chemical weapons, okay? It's easy to come up with excuses. It's easy, as President Obama said, to find a way for doing nothing. Find an excuse for doing nothing. Give me one good reason for not acting. Now, what happened yesterday, of course, in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, first of all, uh, the big vote. It was the first test, if you will, of President Obama's um, call on Congress to support a military strike in Syria. The vote came down 10 to 7. 10-4, 10-4, 7 against. It was a bipartisan vote. Those voting yes included Bob Menendez, uh, Senator Corker from Tennessee, Chris Coons from Delaware, Dick Durbin from Illinois, Jeff Flake, Republican from Il- uh, from Arizona, John McCain, of course, uh, Republican from Arizona also. Uh, ben Cardin, who was on our show yesterday, Democrat from uh, Maryland, Barbara Boxer from California, Gene Shaheen from New Hampshire, uh, and uh, Tim Kaine from Virginia, Democrat. Those voting no. It's important to know how your how your senators voted. Those voted no. Tom Udall, Colorado. Rand Paul from Kentucky. Marco Rubio from Florida. Chris Murphy from Connecticut. James Risch from Idaho. Ron Johnson, Wisconsin. And John Barrasso, Wyoming. Ed Markey. The newest member of the committee from Massachusetts voted present. Democrats, some for, some against. Here is Chris Murphy from Connecticut. Everyone has come to different conclusions. Uh, I simply believe that the risks of action today outweigh the risks of inaction. Neighbor Jean Shaheen from New Hampshire says we got to go. Failing to take action, I believe, against Assad's regime and their use of chemical weapons poses a real threat to our national security interests. And then uh, a lot of the action shifted over to the House yesterday after that vote. The House uh, Foreign Affairs Committee heard from uh, Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel and Secretary of State John Kerry. Uh, And Kerry, again, shot down this idea that this is going to get us involved in the Civil War. If we don't vote to do this, Assad will interpret from you that he's free to go and do this any day he wants to. That's what this is about, not getting involved in Syria's civil war. And President Obama meeting with reporters and the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister of Sweden, a joint news conference there. The President was asked, isn't your credibility on the line? Aren't you the one who drew this red line? Isn't this all about just saving face for you? Uh, and a pr- President Obama, kind of getting a little testy, understandably so, said, hey, it ain't my red line. I didn't set a red line. The world set a red line. The world set a red line when governments representing 98% of the world's population said uh, the use of chemical weapons are abhorrent and passed a treaty f- forbidding their use even when countries are engaged in war. 
Congress set a red line when it ratified that treaty. The president did use the phrase red line a week, a year ago in July. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, but he is certainly not the first one to say it, and he's right. The uh, the uh, Chemical Weapons Convention has been around since the end of World War One, and the president said this idea that I'm just doing this for my credibility is ridiculous. My credibility is not on the line. The international community's credibility is on the line. And America and Congress's credibility is on the line because we give lip service to the notion that these international norms are important. And the president did say, and I thought it was the most important thing he said yesterday, he says, look, we can always find a reason not to act. And we've heard a lot of them lately. Uh, and I, I, you know, look, I'm not, a, I'm not a hawk at all. I'm basically a dove, but I'm not totally against military power. And I do think in this case, given that chemical weapons were used, and by the way, have you noticed this is not another Iraq? We know there are weapons of mass destruction here. Everybody accepts that. Every member of Congress, every senator we've talked to, whether they're going to vote for it or against it, accepts the fact, yes, chemical weapons were used, and there's no doubt who's responsible. So this is not another Iraq. Don't think of it that way. Everybody accepts those two premises. The question is, should we do anything? And the, 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 the reasons that I've heard so far for not doing it, I don't think add up. Number one, we want to go through the United Nations. Yeah, fine, good. Well, impossible, as long as Russia has a veto power, and they've used it already to block any uh, uh, actions against Syria. So that's, that's out. Then the other thing you hear all the time is, why does it have to be us? Why can't somebody else do it? Well, you know what? I'll tell you, because we're in a situation today where we are the only world superpower. As Jim Moran, congressman, pointed out yesterday, our military budget is, is bigger than all the military budgets of all other countries combined. So, you know, with that power comes some responsibility. Uh, nobody else can do it. What are you going to You're going to want Greece to do it? Or how about Uruguay? All right, no, this is Uruguay's turn. Yeah, they're going to grow. That. Ain't going to happen. Uh, so then, then people say, well, yeah, what if? What if we don't know what if? What if uh, Bashar al-Assad bombs Israel or attacks Israel? What if he attacks Turkey? What if he attacks who knows, right? What if he uses chemical weapons? What if, what if, what if, what if? What if? You know, anything you do in life. You, you never know. You never know what possibly might happen after that. At some point, you just got to say, look, this is the right thing to do. We got to take our chances, and we're going to do the right thing. I think there's only one, and I challenge you again, give me one good reason for no military strike against Syria. I think there's only one good reason. And the only one good reason is if you are 100% in all cases against the use of military force, if you would oppose World War II because you think military force is always, always wrong, morally wrong. That I accept. You are a conscientious objector. You are a true, true pacifist, Quaker. Fine. I would accept that. Otherwise, I think it's BS. Mostly BS. Uh, give me one good reason. 866-55-PRESS. Convince me that we ought to sit on our hands and let Bashar al-Assad kill 1,400 people. Do you see those rows of all those little children there wrapped in their shrouds? Let him get away with that. Let him do it again and do nothing? I don't think so. Give me one good reason, 866-55-PRESS. Follow us on Twitter at BP Show. This is The Bill Press Show. It could cost you around $10,000. 
you'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 69222. Did you see the world differently? Did you celebrate the victory? So today, I state clearly and with conviction, America's commitment to seek the peace and security of a world without nuclear weapons. Did you stand up against our greatest threat? is the Bill Press Show. 25 minutes after the hour. Happy New Year, by the way. Rosh Hashanah began at sunda um, sundown. Or sun yeah, sundown last sundown night. Sundown last night, right. Uh, so uh, this is, by the way, Jewish New Year 5,774. So yeah, don't write 5,773 on your checks okay. anymore. Yeah, you, have to re right. you have to remember that today. <laughs> Uh, and uh, former Secretary of Defense Robert Gates, who was Secretary of Defense also under George W. Bush, is out this morning with a statement supporting uh, the call for a military strike in Syria. This is the first statement uh, that he has made uh, on any public policy issue since he retired as Secretary of Defense. And he put out a statement calling on Republicans and Democrats in the House and Senate to vote to support the president. Uh, we're looking for one good reason, 866-55-PRESS. Pete, out in Chicago on the, the great WCPT. What do you say, Pete? Good morning. Good morning, guys. Yeah. Uh, listen, uh, you stole my thunder when you said about Israel because it could widen into a regional war. So I'm going to ask you a question, okay, because when I was on hold, I thought of it. Give me one good reason why we should go in. Uh, I think we've heard one good reason why we should be in because as a, as a world, we have said... 
uh, that nobody should use chemical weapons again, and anybody who does will be held responsible. Okay, then. And, and I would add another one. If we do not do anything, I think it's pretty clear that uh, Bashar al-Assad and other people like him will feel free to use chemical weapons. Okay, but, then but, why well, I, I ask the questions here. So you're saying, just so I make it clear, you're saying the one good reason we should not do it is because he might then lob a missile on Israel. Is that it? And then Israel will retaliate, and then Iran right now will get involved, and then we'll have a regional war, and we'll get sucked into something like we did with Iraq. All right. Uh, you know what, Pete? There, there, there's, no, there's a risk. There's a risk of that. There's no guarantee of that. I, I think Bashar al-Assad is not that stupid. Listen, against the United States and Israel? Are you kidding me? It'd be a, I mean, it'll be a parking lot overnight. Overnight. Prepared for it. He Are prepared? you prepared to send in our U.S. troops no, uh, to no, do that? No, no, no. And I don't think, I, I, I think the president's clear. We're not going to do it. And uh, look, the one thing you can say about Obama, he does not want another war in the Middle East. There's not going to be a third war in the Middle East. We are not going to war against Syria. We are not going to war against Iran. John McCain was not elected. Anna's up in Buffalo, New York. Hey, Anna, listen on WWKB, that great blowtorch up there in the northern New York. Hi, Anna. Hi, Bill. Um, Bill, I'm sorry. I'm really having a hard time. I love you, but you know what? There are atrocities going on in the world, even as we speak. There was Darfur for years. We've got North Korea starving their citizens for uh, so they can build more weapons, and we're doing nothing. you got to follow the money on this one. And this nonsense about it's going to be a short war and we're going to be out, well, even if the war is short, we're going to spend the next 25 years rebuilding these people. We're going to destabilize another Middle Eastern country. It's crap. I'm- Anna, I love you, too. and We can disagree and still uh, be friends, but look. All those other things you mentioned there, there's a lot of other stuff going on in the world, and we can't be everywhere. But there is one place, one place, where one dictator used chemical weapons against his citizens, and that is Syria. This is The Bill Press Show. Kids witness bullying. Oh, look! Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. They want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees. Major fines and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified, not knowing what to do. They do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know, you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 69222. Did you see the world differently? Did you celebrate the victory? So 
today, I state clearly and with conviction, America's commitment to seek the peace and security of a world without nuclear weapons. Did you stand up against our greatest threat? social with bill press like us at facebook.com slash bill press show this is the bill press show here we go 33 minutes after the hour of the uh bill press show here on uh, thursday morning thursday september 5 coming to you from live from our nation's capital brought to you today by the laborers international union the good men and women of the laborers union under president terry o'sullivan Building a Better America. That's their website, too. Layuna, L-I-U-N-A, BuildsAmerica.org. Layuna, BuildsAmerica.org. We're talking about Syria looking for one good reason, not to um, not to hold Bashar al-Assad responsible for the use of chemical weapons, make sure he doesn't do them again. Uh, that's what the convention, the Chemical Weapons Convention calls for. Uh, are we going to stick to it or not? We mentioned earlier that the uh, Democratic Part Democrats were split on this issue, some voting for military strikes, some against it. Republicans are split as well. Marco Rubio says, I'm not convinced. I remain unconvinced that the use of force proposed here will work. The only thing that will prevent Assad from using chemical weapons in the future is for the Syrian people to remove him from power. Yeah, might wait a, might, might wait a long time for that. Uh, John McCain, on the other hand, says this, 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 this is the right move the president's making. We've got to support him. The president has said Bashar Assad must go. So our policy has to be to implement what the president of the United States has said. And the Senate Foreign Relations Committee again voting yesterday 10 to 7 to support the president's call for military strike. Back to your calls in just a second. Peter? Yep, we put out there on First Twitter comments. to give one good reason why we should not go into Syria. What do we got? Uh, immediately, of course, we heard from Igor Volsky, our friend from Think Progress. He chimed in. He, he said, gets up awfully early. Yeah, he does. Well, yes, I guess he he does. he's got to feed the cat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Igor says it opens the door to deeper military involvement in the Syria conflict. No ch- clear achievable goal or end game and unclear where the, what the strike will deter. There's a risk, there's a risk, but I think Obama and John Kerry are, are, and all the administrators, they're pretty clear. They are not going to get involved. This is, this is not involvement in the, in the civil war in Syria. The uh, Also on Twitter, Irish Boy says the certainty of ex- escalation is a reason to not get involved. Black Cat sort of echoes that, says once we get into Syria, we'll never get out. And Rick Rosa says we are arming a future enemy. Not that we haven't done that before. Arming a future? I, yeah, I, I don't... I don't, I don't, I, 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 I don't. I don't follow that. Yeah. Also, taking your comments on Facebook at Facebook. Oh, I think he means that we are sending arms to the rebels. To the rebels. Sure. Uh, on Facebook, facebook.com slash Bill Press Show. Uh, Christopher Chilsom says one good reason, leadership or lack thereof. So you could also chime in there as well. Robert's calling from Abington, Mass. Listening again up on Buffalo's WWKB. Hey, Robert. 
Morning. How you doing? Good morning. Good. Help me out here. One good reason. Hello? Well, yeah, uh, Al-Qaeda's backing the rebels. I mean, hello? Well, is that a reason to strike or not to strike? Well, why should we aid and abet al well, okay, Robert, sorry, your cell phone gave out there. Adios! Uh, no. <laughs> Again, there's the Civil War, all right? We are siding with the opposition to Bashar al-Assad and have for the last two years. And part of the problem and the part of the reason that this has not gone better is because the rebels are split. And there is one element of the rebels who are affiliated with al-Qaeda. Yeah, those are facts. They're all They're over here. We're dealing with a set of facts right now, which is the Syrian regime, Bashar al-Assad, using chemical weapons for the second time against his citizens. It's a direct violation of a treaty that we and 188 other nations have signed. Do we ignore that violation or do something about it? That is the issue, not uh, this dis- disarray among the rebels. Justin. Calling from Saratoga, California. How about it? Hey, Justin, yeah, good morning. Yeah, Silicon Valley. It's I know. You press. I haven't called in before. A long-time listener, first-time caller. Good for you. Thanks for listening on AM 960 out there. Good. What's well, your point? I, well, I, uh, I thought it would be good to hear from somebody who was uh, against the war but also hadn't involved himself in any of the protests. Um, I... Uh, I think that the the issue here is that uh, Syria hasn't uh, declared war on any of our allies or on us, and we haven't had a very good uh, history since World War II of keeping our uh, nose where it belongs. And I, I, I realize that there are um, there are potentially things to deal with, um, but but what about the use of for, chemical weapons, Justin? Do you well, just we're ignore look it for a war criminal? Um, we have, we've got one right here. We've got uh, George Bush, and we've got Dick Cheney, and we've got Donald Trump. Justin, Justin, focus, focus, okay? <laughs> focus. I know it's early in the morning. Focus. Bashar al-Assad has used chemical weapons. Whatever George... Look, y- you've heard me say, I think they should have pers- prosecuted George Bush and Dick Cheney, too. But this is this, this, is, this, is this deal right now. Are we going to let Assad get away with it? Well, is it, would destroying his ability to use chemical weapons even be enough? Can we bring him to trial? Well, I think that's down the road. I mean, again, right now, do we do we just look the other way when he uses these chemical weapons? Well, I, I still think it's a matter of um, uh, international concern, and I, I think we need to uh, have a longer discussion with uh, with other nations. Uh, all right. I think the president that he's in, you know, he's going to be doing that this week. Uh, and the idea way, the idea way, no doubt about it, would be to go through the United Nations. Ain't going to happen with China and Russia and their veto power. I, you know, it's it's just again, it's interesting to me. We can sit here all day and find a thousand and one excuses not to do anything. And I, I, I think we're starting to look like uh, a country that can't get its you-know-what together. I mean, they're basically a country of weenies that is coming up with all these excuses for not doing anything. Uh, I, I, I forget his name. There was a member of Congress yesterday, a Republican, uh, and an Iraq War veteran, freshman, who made that point on the House uh, Foreign Affairs Committee yesterday saying, I just can't believe it. He said, I just hear all my colleagues here making all, all these flimsy excuses for why we can't act. He said, I hope we're just not going to let ourselves as a nation, uh, it, you know, walk away from our responsibilities as a world leader uh, because of all these um, because of all, all these worries about what might happen if, if, if. Scott, out in Chicago. Hey, Scott, what do you say? Hey, Bill. Good morning. Uh, I, I think that uh, when when we rain Tomahawk missiles down on, on Syria, first of all, I don't see it as a deterrent uh, to uh, Assad mm-hmm. unless we kill him. Uh, and other than that, uh, how many how many children are we going to kill? How much blood is going to be on our hands when we when we rain Tomahawk missiles down in, on Damascus? And uh, along with that, how much? Uh, of our treasure goes into these Tomahawk missiles that could be going into hiring school teachers, feeding feeding uh, people that are poor. Uh, no, look, that's a good point. 
uh, and um, uh, you, you know where my you know where my priorities are. I think the defense budget is much too big, and certainly we ought to be paying teachers more. But you know, it, it's just not either or, Scott. I made that point yesterday. I'm I'm of the firm belief that we can uh, educate our kids and feed our kids and house the poor and have food stamps and have national parks and still have a strong military. You know, and, and by the way, we already paid for those damn missiles. We've already got those missiles. They're already on that ship. We're not going to melt them down, sell them for scrap, and use the money to buy f- food for poor kids. You know, I mean, so again, I, it, it's, <laughs> focus on what the issue is. The issue is Saddam, I mean, uh, Bashar al Assad used these chemical weapons against his population, killed 1,400, including some over 400 children what do we do what do we do as the united states i what i hear from you is yeah what the hell let's move on (laughs) hey thanks scott howard out in hollywood california where i had uh spent a good number of years hi howard Uh, it's hollywood florida Oh, it's Hollywood, Florida. Sorry, that's right. (laughs) I want to disagree with you, but the part of disagreeing with you scares me because it means I'm on Rubio and uh, (laughs) and Paul's side. That scares me terribly. You pick your friends, Howard. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let me go first to your weenie theory. Um, And I've got several points if I can make them. Uh, The weenie theory being, we are standing on principle. Anyone who votes to go to attack... Mm -hmm. Syria is standing on principle. That would have to be the basic reason. Yeah. Now, if you're standing on principle, what if I tell you Russia just gassed a town of 10,000 people? That means you have to do exactly the same thing to Russia. And I say that the weenie theory will apply to us because we won't do it. We are bullies. But see, that's a total hypothetical, Howard. Fight back. It's a total hypothetical. The, well, the principle no. is the principle is the conventional the chemical weapons convention. The principle is right. You take a stand and then you back it up. But principle is not hypothetical. Principle is principle. No, but now, uh, Russia. But Russia may be someday in the future using uh, chemical weapons to wipe out a town of ten thousand or whatever is a hypothetical. Bashar al-Assad did use them. But the the fact that we're talking about principle. And I'm saying to you, are you willing right now to say that if I, Russia I, I, does, you will attack them? You must say yes. Otherwise, you are not using principle. Uh, and I'm telling you, I deal with real facts and not with hypotheticals. And again, that by, by that logic, you, by that logic, we would never do one damn thing in our entire life. As a nation, we would be helpless. We would be... Uh, just uh, a, a, a total non-starter as a nation. If we follow that principle, that we have to avoid every hypothetical thing that could ever go wrong from any action we would ever take. That's not the United States of America that I know. Hey, when we come back, President Obama is sticking it to Vladimir Putin, by the way, Howard, by meeting with LGBT leaders uh, in Russia. We'll talk about that when we come back. This is the Bill Press Show. Visit StopBullying.gov. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified, 
Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know, you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 69222. So 12 minutes before the top of the hour. Hey, forget Syria. We're going to be talking sports at the top of the next hour. Then we'll get back to Syria. Sports at the next hour. Uh, top of with uh, Cindy Boren, sports blogger for the Washington Post. Meanwhile, President Obama is now in St. Petersburg. Uh, wheels down for Air Force One just a few minutes ago. Uh, where the president will be there for the uh, G20 summit, and he has also scheduled a very uh, important and maybe controversial meeting. Amir Madani covers the White House for the USA Today, joining us on our news line this morning. Hi, Amir. Good to have you with us this morning. Hey, thanks for having me, Bill. So uh, the president has, uh, has sort of sticking it to uh, Vladimir Putin by meeting with LGBT leaders, right? How yeah, so uh, uh, sticking it, but quietly. Sticking it. Um, <laughs> if you can do that, I don't know. Um, so th there's going to be a meeting on Friday that will include representatives uh, from groups supporting human rights, environment, free media, um, but also LGBT rights groups. Um, and it's, it's sort of an interesting time in Russia right now uh, when it comes to the LGBT community. Um, Russia's faced um, international criticism, um, particularly. They've always had a bad track record when it comes to um, the LGBT community, but in June they've, uh, they've passed a law banning the promotion of gay relationships to minors. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think I'm underplaying what that says. That essentially, um, it's hard to even effectively speak of, um, uh, of, of a gay lifestyle in public, uh, according to that law, and you could face the huge fine up to about 30,000 U.S. American, um, American dollars. Uh, and they've also, in the recent past, they've faced some, um, for uh, a law that bans adoptions by countries allowing same-sex marriages. Um, so it, it comes in, in this background. Um, Obama's going to, uh, you know, he has included, decided to include LGBT groups in these, this meeting that he's going to have with civil society uh, leaders while he's in St. Petersburg. It certainly is a way of sending a message to Vladimir Putin. The president has spoken out already, saying, you know, he, he's appalled by some of these policies of Russia. Uh, and 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 I think uh, it, it's it's certainly significant that the president has uh, canceled his one his one on one meeting with Vladimir Putin, right? But is meeting with these LGBT people. It's a, it's, a, it's an in your face statement, I think, which I appreciate. I, I think so. I think it, well, well, you know, I think that's true. I think it's going to irk Putin, um, who spoke to it a little bit yesterday. Um, but I think for for Obama as well. Um, 
you know, he has he's he's spoken out about this, um, and I think he was a lot more outspoken about his beliefs early in his career as a state senator about the LGBT community than he could be as a uh, as a national political figure until you know fairly recently until uh, last year when he came out with the full uh, voice support uh, for for right. same sex marriage, uh, but you know. He has to follow, you know, at some point you got to follow your principles on this, and this seems to be matched in line with what he, his principles are. He and has, got, yeah, he has, if I just jump in, he has scheduled one-on-one meetings at the G20 with uh, David Cameron from Britain, with Francois Hollande from France, and a couple of others I know. Has, uh, do you think there will be maybe even, you know, thrown in at the last minute a one-on-one with Putin, or are they going to stick to... Uh, uh, just a handshake as they walk in and out of the room or something. I think nothing is uh, impossible. And the White House is uh, sort of, that's their line right now, is that the, the scheduled meetings are, as you mentioned, Olaf and Cameron, uh, Abe, um, and uh, President Xi uh, from China. But um, at the other end, they're saying that it's possible that they'll speak, it's very likely that they'll speak during the course of the meetings, um, mm-hmm. Um, on the margins, but not on the sidelines. You know, very much summit uh, speak. Um, but you know, a meeting's possible, and I think that this is such uh, a crucial moment um, with Syria. Not speaking is not the best idea. Uh, you know, well, I would hope if they do, uh, if they do uh, end up having any meeting, that uh, that Vladimir Putin might um, uh, improve his. Uh, body chemistry or his posture a little bit at least pretend that he's enjoying the meeting <laughs> as opposed to the last time maybe got a lot of got to run a uh, run along here amr madani thanks so much for your time this morning amr see you at the white house sure. Bye-bye. All right. white house reporter for usa today like politics then like the bill press show on facebook this is the bill press show witness bullying. Oh, look! Your crush is looking at you. Poor you. They want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving because buzz driving is drunk driving. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified, not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know, you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 69222.
Bill Press Show. Here we go uh, at the top of the next hour again. Cindy Boren in studio with us from the Washington Post to talk sports, sports, sports. NFL, believe it or not, starts tonight. Ravens and the Broncos uh, in Denver. Uh, and then Dylan Byer, Byers, sorry, the senior media, media reporter for Politico in studio, talking about how the media is handling the um, call for action in Syria. Peter? Yes, indeed, Bill. A quick story. This is an interesting situation because Governor of Rhode Island, Lincoln Chafee, has yes. had an interesting couple of years. He was elected as an independent in 2010. He changed his status to a Democrat in Became May. A Democrat, right. And yesterday he announced that he is not going to run for a second term as governor of Rhode Island. This is still his first term. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's still his first term. Well, what the hell? What's going on? I, I mean, I, who knows? I mean, he, you know, people thought when he changed to a Democrat that he, you know, he was already looking ahead to sort of a nasty primary battle, and so they figured that this was a clear move that he was going to run again as a Democrat, but he decided not to. Uh, Lincoln Chafee, good man and a very independent man, uh, and drove the Republican Party crazy <laughs> when he was uh, here as the United States Senator because he didn't always vote the uh, party line. That's why he became an independent and then eventually became a Democrat. And the son, of course, of a great United States Senator from Rhode Island, uh, John Chafee. Uh, football coming up tonight, believe it or not, Cindy Borman will tell us all about it. This is the Bill Press Show. Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look! Your crush is looking at you. Poor you. They want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Hey, good morning, good morning. It is Thursday, September 5. Great to see you today and welcome. Welcome to the Bill Press Show. Lots going on we need to talk about this morning. Lots you're going to want to comment on this morning. Uh, and that's what we do here. We will uh, bring you all the news of the day, whether it's happening here in our nation's capital, around the country, or around the globe. Tell you what's going on and then give you a chance to uh, sound off about it. You know how you do so. Give us a call at 866 55 Press. That is our toll-free number, army of uh, operators standing by to take your calls. And also, you can join us on Twitter. Just give us your comments on Twitter. That's easy enough from your smartphone. At BP Show. At BP Show is our Twitter handle. And for all of our friends, thousands and thousands of friends on Facebook, it is uh, Facebook.com slash Bill Press Show. Well, yes, again yesterday, from the U.S. Senate to Stockholm, Syria was the number one issue. The president saying in Stockholm, telling reporters, hey, I'm not the one who drew the red line. The world drew the red line in 1925 against chemical weapons. And now the question is, are we going to do anything or just try to find an excuse not to act? Meanwhile, in Washington, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, a bipartisan vote of 10 to 7, voted to support a military strike against Syria with their eyes on 2016. Both Rand Paul and Marco Rubio voted against it. Speaking of Rand Paul, he's going to New Jersey next week, but Chris Christie will not be there to greet him. Chris Christie says he already has plans to be celebrating his wife's 50th birthday, and she's more important to him than Rand Paul is. <laughs> He's right. That also has <laughs> echoes or whatever, uh, uh, am ramifications for 2016. All of that coming up right here. Stay with us on The Bill Press Show. This is The Bill Press Show. Don't look at me. Your 
hair's a bit frizzy today. Oh, you should pick that up. <laughs> oh, you're such a dork. Loser. Here, let me help you with that. Oops. <laughs> Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look. Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. <laughs> they want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know, you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 69222. Did you see the world differently? Did you celebrate the victory? So today, I state clearly and with conviction, America's commitment to seek the peace and security of a world without nuclear weapons. Did you stand up against our greatest threat? Broadcasting around the nation, on your radio, on your TV, and online. This is the Bill Press Show. It ain't my red line, says the president. <laughs> Somebody else drew it. I'm just trying to enforce it. Hey, good morning, everybody. What do you say? It is Thursday, September 5. So good to see you today. And welcome to the Bill Press Show, booming out to you live all across this great land of ours, coast to coast. From our studio here on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., on your local progressive talk radio station, you bet. Proud to be, uh, to start off the line up there on all your local progressive talk radio stations around the country. And then you can catch us online at uh, a whole new site just started this week. 
YouTube.com slash Talker TV, T A W K R. Isn't that how everybody spells Talker? <laughs> Around uh, here it is. <laughs> yeah. YouTube.com slash Talker TV. Uh, join us there. And as of Monday, you'll be able to join us on Free Speech TV. Very excited about that, but not as excited as we are to welcome back to the program today uh, one of our favorite sports blogger for the Washington Post, Cindy Boren. Hi, Cindy. Good morning, Bill. Great to see you. It's great to be here. You're always an early morning person. We love that. Love that. Yeah. Thanks Especially for Especially you have to come across a river. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, always here early, always here on time. Yes. One of our favorite. Like Diana Nyad. You, yes. Diana <laughs> Nyad. You, you cross that. <laughs> she was early. You know, they thought yeah. it would take 70 hours. It took her 50. She caught the Gulf Stream and she was. <laughs> oh, is that? I didn't yeah. realize she it, arrived she was, it was. Well, you know what? Much shorter Seeing than her come caught. ashore, it's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. God, boy, she yeah, was yeah. beat I up. She was much longer. She was. Yeah, but God bless her. She's. She, yeah. yeah, that's amazing. It is. I, I'm. I'm a huge fan. Uh, and all these people who said, "Oh, come on, it's just in her head. She didn't prove anything." Yes, she did. Yes, yeah, she did. You yeah, know? she didn't give up, and she showed that you know you can. If you've been an athlete all your life, you can train for something like this. Even no. at, I feel the same. I feel the same exact way. About. But then I ab- about her like oh, I, yeah. I think I, it's great and wonderful. And then at the same time, I go the human body is not meant to do that. <laughs> you know, it's just you are really hurting yourself <laughs> on yeah. some level. I maybe think maybe fifty but miles, not a hundred. No. Right. <laughs> right. I, I feel that way at the gym every morning. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Peter Ogburn and Dan Henning, Team Press here in hey, place hey. this morning. Good of morning. Course. Uh, with Alicia Cruz, she's got the phones covered, and for our online people, Supreme Bowling's got the video cams cranking this morning, uh, all mm-hmm. looking good. Well, um, Tuesday is the primary uh, in New York City in the uh, for the wait. mayor's race, <laughs> and it probably <laughs> will be the last day we hear from Anthony Weiner, at least for a while. As somebody pointed out, by the way, you know, after Weiner loses, that's when the real fun is going to start. They should have reporters following him after the election, because that's when things will really get interesting with him. Well, All he's those. not going to go away. Oh, no. No, he, he's no, not no, going to no. go away. And uh, I'll tell you, and everywhere he goes, uh, he gets a reaction, as he did yesterday, walked into a Jewish delicatessen. Somebody spotted him, of course, and started giving him a hard time, and uh, here, we're going to hear how it started, right? You're a real scumbag, Anthony. Yeah, wow, scumbag. very nice. Very nice. That's a charming guy right there. Married to an Arab. Uh, yeah. Notice yeah. the guy says, charming guy. Married to an nice. Arab. In front of children. Nice. That is charming. Disgusting. You're a disgusting charming. Disgusting. Yeah, it takes one to know one, jackass. <laughs> Man. Uh, and he starts that as Anthony Weiner starts walking out of the store. Now, when we first heard about this, we thought, oh, this is Anthony Weiner just popping off. But when you hear the beginning of this and the guy says, married to an Arab, what does that have to do with anything, right? So I, I got to tell you, Anthony Weiner comes, here, here, here's how it ends up. What's that? What's that? What's that? You wait till I walk out to say anything. That's courage. That's courage. You wait till I walk out to say anything. Okay. Yeah, you're not afraid of anything. Don't use language in front of kids. Things. You have a nerve to even oh, yeah. walk around in public. And, and you're, you're a perfect person. I'm not you're my judge. But I you're my judge. What rabbi taught you, you that? I didn't do it. What rabbi taught you that you're my judge? You're fine. You talk Thank to you. God Thank and you. work out your problems, but stay out of the public right. eye. No, That's I'm not going to stay with That's up to you to judge, my friend. Yes. I don't take my judgment from you, and I don't judge you. Anthony Weiner's man. Yeah. Honestly, these sound like my kids fighting. I know. They, they do. really do. Yeah, yeah. And Wiener should have just Wiener should have just walked away. But after you hear the beginning of that, with this guy attacking his wife, I don't blame Anthony Wiener. Mm-mm. Yeah. But know? it was more about Wiener than it was about his wife. You know, I, yeah. To me, it seems, you know, that, that he was attacked, not so much, you know, coming to his wife's defense. It was more like he was attacked because he kept, take, you know, referring to himself. Yeah. And uh, to me. But um, I, th- all, I think a lot of people learned a long time ago, you're not going to win a shouting match with Anthony Wiener. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. So, believe it or not, football starts tonight. The season starts tonight. Uh, Sydney Bourne's going to tell us all about that and other good sports stuff. And Dylan Byers. From uh, Politico, media re- senior media reporter will be joining us uh, at the half. Cindy, we'll get right into it. But first, this is and the, the big story of the press. day. Other headlines making news on this Thursday. ABC revealed the cast for the next season of Dancing with the Stars mm-hmm. yesterday. It's got a lot of variety from actress Valerie Harper, who's battling brain cancer, all the way to Snooki from
from the Jersey Shore. Also, Leah no. Romini, who just left the Church of Scientology, is in it. <laughs> Blue collar comedian Bill Engvall, Bill Nye, the science guy, no. and former NFL star Keyshawn Johnson, among others. And Tucker? No. No, no Tucker Carlson. No Tucker Carlson. They so usually have a political person in the mix. They don't have anybody, anybody uh-uh. really political, I guess. Watch. They Anthony. usually have more sports people, too. Oh, and yeah. You know, yeah. unlike Keyshawn. Anthony Weiner. You nailed it. I bet you. I he'll guarantee you he'll be on a future season. He'll be he'll on the next on season. season. He'll be on next season because he won't be mayor. Oh, nailed it. So many ways to go with that. <laughs> Geraldo Rivera has lost a speaking engagement thanks to that nearly naked selfie he posted to Twitter back in July where he was wearing nothing but a towel low across his waist in the bathroom. Duquesne University in Pittsburgh canceling the Fox News' host appearance at an event uh, marking the uh, JFK assassination. The cat Catholic school said his photo was inappropriate and inconsistent with its values. Well, he had a towel on. Why and by now? the way, he wasn't... I know, why now? And he wasn't going to show up wearing a right. towel. Right. It's a little silly. And if you're a Baltimore Ravens fan, you're going to learn a lot more about Obamacare this football season. The Super Bowl champion yeah. NFL team has signed on to be the first sports franchise to partner with the White House to encourage participation in the new health care law. The Obama administration had trying a partner had tried partnering with the NFL in, in its entirety, but got too much pressure from Republicans, and now they're working on partnering with individual teams to promote enrollments. That's, are are yeah. concussions covered under Obamacare? <laughs> <laughs> right. That's an interesting segue. Uh-huh. So, yeah, let's start right there. Uh, is this appropriate, and do you think more teams are going to be doing it? Uh, I question whether more teams will be doing it just because of the number of owners that are actually uh, being Republican donors <laughs> and billionaires. Yeah. Um, I, I think the Ravens, you know, being located here was probably part of, of why they, they jumped in on it and being the Super Bowl champions. Um, it's interesting. See yeah. where it goes. I'm not sure but yet exactly where it goes. If it's if it were possible, which it probably is not, to put politics aside here, you'd have to say what they're saying is, hey, there's an opportunity. If you don't have health insurance, you got a chance to get it right now at bargain rates. Mm-hmm. You couldn't get a, you couldn't qualify before, and you probably couldn't afford it. Mm-hmm. And now you can. And for informing the American people of that opportunity should not be a political football. No, it shouldn't. That's true. Or football. Huh. I mean, That's yeah. good. That's good. <laughs> but, but it will be. So oh, I'm, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, took, it took a while. There's a little delay there. I got it. <laughs> well, good for the Ravens is sure, all i got to say. Sure, sure. All right, before we get into tonight's season, <laughs> uh, so are, are the Nats going to uh, make, make it? I'm going to oh, say man. no. Um, really? They're six and a half games out half of the out. second wild card. Yeah. Um, and they're in a, a division that, that is, you know, terrible. Um, they're, they? they're way back. And, and, and the, the, the glamour division in the National League is the NL Central with, you know, the Cardinals, the Reds. They're beating yeah. each other. Uh, and the Pirates who are, you know, running yeah, away yeah, with yeah. it. Right. So you would think that the two wild cards would come out of there. Um, the Reds have a little tougher way to go here, um, and so, as do the Cardinals, schedule-wise, than the Nats do. But I, I the thing think about the Nats short. is they have a way of pulling it out of the fire at the last minute. Well, the, of late, yes, um, they. But have. of course, we are at the last minute right they, now. I mean, they are, how many games yeah. are left? They've got right up against it. Yeah, yeah, there's less. You know, there's a month to go, a little mm-hmm. less. Um, you know, the problem for them is they don't score runs. They don't play particularly well um, when it comes to fundamentals. They don't execute the fundamentals. Um, and they sit, seem to go out and, and, you know, just wait for the three-run homer that never comes. <laughs> right. You know, they're not right. out there manufacturing runs. Um, so we'll see. Uh, you know, it, <laughs> this would be the time to do it if they're going to do it. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. But I'm, I mean, they I'm really skeptical. Are I'm time. skeptical. Yeah. I am too. I, I'm very skeptical. A month ago, I think, or even three weeks ago, I think they might have had – like if they caught fire and just got lucky, they could have made it. But I think they're well. They have, yeah. you know, they have been playing really well. Um, yeah. I think yeah. What seventeen and eight or something. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, they needed to be like you know twenty four and two. Right. Or, you know, <laughs> right, whatever. Right, right. We play well except when I go to the game. And then the, yeah, Bill's bad luck. I, I haven't right seen away. him win. So you, are you once. going to the games any over this next month? I think for the sake of the Nats, I'll stay home. Yeah, stay away. I, I think Watch that might be TV. a good idea. But I did go Friday night. Had a great time, but they yeah. lost. Yeah, I mean, they sh- you know they should have swept the Mets. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, tell us about this NFL settlement. We haven't talked to you since then. Uh, $765 million sounds like a lot of money. 
it's almost a billion dollars. Yeah, <laughs> but um, a lot of people criticize the the players for just caving in here and taking uh, kind of a short term gain and not and, and not staying in there for what they might have gotten out of the if they had gone to court and actually had a real battle over this. How well, do you read it? Well, it is a, a paltry amount for the the owners. You know, they have nine mm-hmm. billion dollars roughly revenues every year, um, and half of this has to be paid out over the first three years. So do the math; it's not. That much, you know, over three right, years. Right, right. Um, and then the rest of it over, what? 20. 20, 20, 20 years. 20 years. They yeah. have 20 yeah. years to pay yeah. it. 20 years yeah. to pay it. Um, the, the issue for the NFL, of course, was they were taking a massive PR hit. Um, the That was basically what the players had on their side was public relations. What the NFL had on its side was time and money. And the players, you know, have neither. They need both desperately. Um, they, they don't have a lot of time. These are guys who are suffering. Um, and they... You know, they they settled. The The troubling part of the settlement for me is the fact that, that all of this information that the NFL has is secret because that's the nature of settlements. You know, you right. don't have to divulge right. anything. And, you know, I wish I wish there were an, a, an open sharing of information there. I also don't think the lawsuits are over. I think more players will continue to sue. More can, more can sue. And, uh, you know, there's the whole helmet thing that's still out there, the helmet lawsuit. Right. Uh, in fact, I saw an article this morning um, – Four former NFL players have sued the league and its mm-hmm. helmet maker. Um, right. right. This is a new mm-hmm. uh, NFL concussion lawsuit. So this 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 is unrelated. Yes. And you know some of the players who 4,000, 4,500 players who were in the first suit can still drop out before the settlement is accepted if they choose to um, by the judge. What's the answer here? Uh, I mean, there's no part of uh, part of the settlement did not, from what I saw, did not say we're going to do this differently or have different helmets or have different uh, rules of play, right? Or well, the, uh, the, the, the settlement the also has, uh, has some grassroots things, some, some high school involvement, a little bit of collegiate involvement, but there's an NCAA lawsuit uh, pending as well over concussions and injuries. Um, so there will be a little bit of that, and the NFL has taken a, a public relations initiative with um, high schools. But and they can't Kiwi. prevent head injuries, can they? Well, that's the problem. That's the downside. Um, I mean, you can you can do some of it by keeping your head out of tackles. You know, if you see what you tackle, you're not going to have your head in there. Um, the the other problem is they've discovered, and it would be nice to have this information from the NFL that it's not necessarily the big huge hits that leave you going, wow. Mm. It's the accumulation of little ones. Yeah. Mm. You know, mm. and, and that can be just as as deleterious to a person's health as, as the big hits. Uh, so tonight, they're back on the field. They Ravens are. and the Broncos in Denver. Yeah. That's, you know, it was an unfortunate talk about public relations in the NFL. It was unfortunate because the, the Ravens had, winning the Super Bowl, they should have had the game at home. Yeah. They deserved a home game. <laughs> but, you know, the Orioles are playing a game. You can understand baseball didn't want to give up a home game. The O's are in a, in a wild card fight as well. Uh, so the Ravens are going on the road two of all places Denver where um, they that. weren't That's terribly great. they weren't terribly popular <laughs> no. when they left there yeah. last last winter uh, after what two overtimes yeah. um, and then the, the you know the NFL typically puts up the, the big pictures of the Super Bowl champions all over town which is a great thing if you're having a home game yeah. if you're putting up pictures of Joe Flacco all over Denver <laughs> and a giant picture of him on the side of the stadium you can understand that Denver people are not too happy yeah. Were you surprised the Patriots dumped Tim Tebow? No. Not at all. Yeah. He, I, I don't think he can play in the NFL. I know he's your favorite player, but <laughs> I, I don't think he can play. I don't. You, you, mean, you just don't think he's good enough? No. Uh, he doesn't have an arm. Um, he came in in garbage time for the Patriots in a couple of preseason games, which I actually stuck around to watch because I, yeah. I was entertained and wanted to see what he had. and. He just hasn't progressed, and he was with the guy who drafted him in, in Denver, who's the offensive coordinator in New England. If, if he was going to thrive under mm. anyone, it would have been that guy, you would think. And, you know, maybe they sign him back if they have a problem down the line, but I, I don't think so. Nobody's but, picked him up. But here's why I think you're wrong, because oh. he's praying. Oh, well. <laughs> he's praying that he, be, that he realizes his dream of being an NFL quarterback. Well, we'll find out if that works. <laughs> We'll find out if there is a God or not. <laughs> Cindy Boren. Wow. She, I, I said yeah, that. Said she that. didn't. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Cindy Boren's here for the Washington Post. Uh, your sports questions, comments across the board, even tennis. We'll talk about that when we come back. 866-55-PRESS. The uh, Bill Press Show here.
This is the Bill Press Show. Kids witness bullying. Oh, look! Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> For you. They want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one. Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees major fines and steep insurance penalties you could lose everything nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving because buzz driving is drunk driving when some people struggle with their mortgage payments they become frozen petrified not knowing what to do they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 69222. Did you see the world differently? Did you celebrate the victory? So today, I state clearly and with conviction, America's commitment to seek the peace and security of a world without nuclear weapons. Did you stand up against our greatest threat? is the Bill Press Show. At 26 minutes after the hour with Washington Post sports blogger Cindy Boren, WashingtonPost.com, where you can follow her every day. You don't have to wait till she shows up again on the Bill Press Show. <laughs> read Cindy Boren. Uh, all right, now the big sports story of the day, of course, Cindy, is 
Uh, your new owner, Jeff Bezos, is in town. Wait a has been in town. Whoa, whoa, wait, whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, so what I want to know wow, is he, he was here. Audible. He was here Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, were you in the meeting with him? I was not in the meeting. Well, I was in the, the big staff the big meeting. Staff with him. meeting. Yeah, I was yeah, there. Right. Yeah. I, I figured you. And you'd you know, have he to walks be. in. He's wearing kind of a pair of khaki jeans and and. Uh, a nice blue shirt like yours. He uh-huh. dressed just like you, in fact. He was very handsome. And, uh, uh, Jeff and I have a thing going here. <laughs> and, yeah. and, you know, he said everything you wanted to hear him say. He he has a love of, of not necessarily newspapers, but journalism and what we're doing. And he sees some some reason to think that there's money to be made out of a newspaper eventually. So we'll You see. felt good after the meeting? Sure, yeah. sure. And he talked about the golden age of the Post. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and and do you, did you have the impression that he's going to be a hands-on kind of guy? And, no. Uh, no, really? No, yeah. he, he intends from what he said so far. And, you know, of course, what people say before they actually take ownership and what they do and say afterward can be two different things. But he p- intends to stay in Seattle working his what he calls his day job. And, <laughs> it's uh, a hell of a day job. It is. A, yeah. It's a good day <laughs> <Yeah>. job. <laughs> and, uh, you know, let the management team here that's been in place at the Post continue. You know, now, so now when you go to Amazon.com and they have that l- long list of things you can buy on Amazon, right? That's uh-huh. going to be the Washington Post. Well, hopefully right. not down at the bottom. Hopefully it'll well, be at the top. Alphabetical. So no, no oh. it's going to have to go right at the top. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> and by the way, Amazon is a fabulous company. It is, isn't it? <laughs> oh, uh, Jeff, did you hear that? Uh, can we, we should send a little t- a tweet of that over to Jeff Bezos to yeah. make sure that he, that he heard. Uh, we are just about out of time. I'm just going to say, th- this U.S. Open has proven to be so much fun, huh? Um, yes and no. It's been disappointing to see Roger Federer drop oh, out. Yes. Um, it was disappointing to see Maria Sharapova drop out. Uh, Serena Williams is on a roll yes, in the women's. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, it's just not even really competitive. Uh, last night, Rafael Nadal just killed the guy who beat uh, Federer. So, you know... Djokovic and Nadal are playing awfully well. Nadal's playing ridiculously well. Great stuff to watch. Sydney Bourne, so much fun having you in the studio. Thank you so much. This is the Bill Press Show. Visit StopBullying.gov. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know, you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 69222. Did you see the world differently? Did you celebrate the victory? So 
So today, I state clearly and with conviction, America's commitment to seek the peace and security of a world without nuclear weapons. Did you stand up against our greatest threat? is the Bill Press Show. You got it. 33 minutes after the hour. It's Thursday, September 5, everybody. Summer, long over. My God, here we go. Coming to you live from our nation's capital, brought to you today by the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. You know, the good men and women of the Teamsters Union under President Jim Hoffa. Building a better America. We all live better because of their good work, and you can find out more about what they're up to, all the good things they're doing at teamster.org. Syria is the issue of the day, and um, uh, it is uh, keeping uh, all of us uh, White House reporters and other journalists very, very busy. We even had to work over the Labor Day weekend because um, President Obama decided he was going to make his announcement from the Oval Office on, uh, not not actually from the Rose Garden, uh, on Saturday. So we didn't get a weekend off. Dylan Byers didn't either. He's the senior media reporter for Politico in the studio with us this morning. Dylan, what's going on? How you doing? You know, uh, this. Uh, I'm doing good, thank you. Um, th- Syria has changed a lot of things, including the launch date for the new Crossfire. Right, moved it up a week. Moved it up a week, uh, rightfully so, because th- th- there'd be a whole week where the House and the Senate are going to be debating whether or not they're going to support right. a military strike on Syria. That's the time when you want your political debate show to be on the air. It's a smart move, though. Can I say if I were ever to launch or relaunch a television show, I would set the launch date at any given time, and then I would announce that I was moving it up a week <laughs> oh, just yeah. to draw more attention to it. I'm not saying that's what Jeff's like. I'm just throwing that out there. That's uh, It uh, works. Yeah, it does, it does work. And uh, you uh, marked the occasion yesterday, uh, you and your colleagues at Politico, by, uh, and we have tweeted this out this morning, um, mm-hmm. revealing or summing up with the, the 10 best past moments. Definitive list. Of, <laughs> of, it, can, it cannot be debated. <laughs> <laughs> of Crossfire, uh, including number three on your list. Here's a familiar voice. Why should we pay you for more than 89 when you're only working well, 89? 89 days here in Washington. But as you know, we've got constituents at home. We've got issues in our district that we need to deal with. John and the fact is, this is classic Washington thinking. That if we're not passing some new big government program or, or issuing new regulations, getting into the pockets of our constituents, then we're not working. So what's funny about that is, Dylan, Yes. Uh, number one, that uh, John Boehner and I both look a lot younger. <laughs> Uh-huh. In that clip, but two is John Boehner said this very same thing two weeks ago. It's, when ama- he, it's amazing when he said, "Don't judge us by how many bills we pass, by how many right. we repeal." You can't knock him for being inconsistent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, that's really. I don't know what year that was, but it was 1998, was, 15 98. years ago. And the point I was making is, you worked 89 days this year, or right. at this six months, or whatever the period was. Why should we be paying you right. for? I more think I had only 89? been alive for 89 days. In <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh, <laughs> rub it in. Uh, <laughs> but but through those clips, and you see you see Newt Gingrich, you see um, the funny the funniest part 
The very first one you show, which I think is number 10, yeah. is a back in the early days. 82. Of uh, Crossfire with Tom Braden and Bob Novak. And there is a, um, the, the, the guest is a wizard or something of the KKK. Right. And he is in full uniform. Right. With the white robe and the pointy hat. Uh, the, the and right. Tom Braden has taken him on, right? Right. Uh, but what you didn't show, Novak at least told me the story, that that began by Tom Braden saying, "Well, thank you for coming in, but why are you wearing that silly costume?" <laughs> <laughs> and the guy answered, "Because your producer told me to." Oh, oh <laughs> no! Are you? Serious? Hey, you know yeah, what? Yeah. You know what? <laughs> oh, that's now that's the story I heard from Bob Novak. <laughs> Come as there, you are. I, I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> That's but a good it, producer. I have to stand up here for producer. That's a good producer. That's, Come on. <laughs> I mean, why would you have a guy in the KKK come in and not dressed up like a member of the KKK? <laughs> oh, <laughs> so that mar that marks the occasion. Uh, Monday night is the uh, beginning launch of the new Crossfire with mm -hmm. uh, Ben Jones and Stephanie Cutter and S.E. Cup and Newt Gingrich. Yes. Uh, and Newt Gingrich is it is hard, very hard for me to see how he is not just going to steal the spotlight. I mean, he obviously is a talker. He commands a lot of attention. It's sort of hard to see how he's not going to dominate the other three. They had to know that when they hired him. Oh, of course. Yeah. I say, I say this. I'm not joking. I have talked about Crossfire and the new cast of Crossfire and the new host. I still don't ever not laugh. When I say Newt Gingrich is going to be one of the hosts of Crossfire, it's just so funny to me because I do think he's just going to is going to be the Newt Gingrich show. Well, you know, I mean, he was huge for the Republican debates last year, and even afterward, he won the South Carolina primary because of the Republican debate. Oh yeah, I believe. and yeah. because he took on the media because yes. he took on John yes, King exactly. And then you know, a, a kind of moment when I think everybody in our world knew that Newt Gingrich <clears throat> that somebody should book Newt Gingrich ASAP was when he went on hardball with Chris Matthews and they had this great debate and all of a sudden like the entire Beltway press corps for like the hour the five o'clock hour was paying attention to hardball in a way that they don't usually because it was just Gingrich versus Matthews and the idea is to try and recreate some of that energy now it'd be great if CNN could book Chris Matthews as well obviously they can't. <laughs> no uh, but I did get a call yesterday from uh, talk about uh, back in the uh, in the time warp machine from Pat Buchanan and oh, he and man. I had a good long conversation about the new Crossfire, and we both wish it well. And uh, uh, and the, the the launch party now is going to be the tenth, the day right. after. Um, so everyone will have something to talk about. Yeah, well, <laughs> exactly. I want to talk to you about. Uh, we are now in war mode, just about with with Syria. Uh, there was a lot of criticism of the White House press corps not asking tough questions in the build up to the war in Iraq. I don't think you can say that about the build-up to the military strike in Syria, can you? No, you can't. And, and what's interesting is uh, folks who support a military strike are, are very eager to remind you of all the ways that Syria is not like Iraq. And, of course, there are, are many differences. It's more comparable to things that we did in 1998 with Iraq and with al-Qaeda and things like that. But um, the shadow of Iraq and the shadow of all the mistakes and the shadow of the lack of criticism by the media... Uh, in the run-up to that war has has created this sense of, like, hyper-caution. Uh, and so we're kind of, we're doing a much, uh, I, I would say that the press is doing a much better job of, of proceeding cautiously, of, of questioning the intelligence that's coming out, um, rather than just kind of beating the war drums. Do you, the uh, members of Congress are, are reporting universally, uh, just about, that, that the reaction they're getting from people in their districts is very negative. One congressman said 500 letters or 500 phone calls, 498 against it. Right. <laughs> two that are for it. And <laughs> the, the public the opinion polls show calls. the American people are not eager for certainly not another Definitely. war, not even a military strike, a unilateral military strike, and even not even that excited about something that we would do with other, with other nations. Is the negative reporting and questioning about Syria responsible for the public reaction or... No, I think I think the the kind of war weariness predates the run up to Syria in a way, and I think that if anything, the media is something of a reflection of that. There's certainly a divide between kind of popular opinion 
on a military strike and then the kind of beltway thinking on a military strike. And now that, you know, Obama has the Senate, uh, he's still struggling to get the House. But 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 either way, there there seems not to be that but he has the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Right. He has the Senate Foreign Relations but Committee. But not me. the Senate necessarily. Right. Probably, but, but not. But there is there is a sense uh, there is a sense that the uh, the war weariness is greater out there in so-called real America, and that in in within the Beltway, um, that that while you certainly have a lot of people who are opposed to military strike, especially the lib- you know anti-war liberals, libertarians, groups like that, um, that that might not be as well reflected here in Washington, and and it'll be interesting to see how the media kind of you know, charts that course. At the president's news conference yesterday, he was asked, in effect, isn't this all about you're just trying to save face? You're just trying to, um, uh, to uh, save your own credibility, right. if you will, because you use this red line phrase of, uh, a year ago, and now you've got to prove that uh, you're a man of your word. Well, it's really... Is that a fair question? Yeah, I, I think it is a fair question. I mean, you have to uh, try. By the try, way, I think anything's a fair question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so right, <laughs> right. But try, try some time uh, calling up someone you know who doesn't know anything about what's going on in Syria and explaining to them. And when they say, wait, wait, wait a second, why do we have to get involved in their civil war? And they'll be like, oh, well, this thing happened and this red line thing happened. They're like, wait a second. We're doing this because he said something. And now you see that the administration is trying to kind of disown this a little bit. You know, I didn't set the red line. The world set the red line. Well, you know, in a, way, there, the, in, in a manner of speaking, that's true. But at the same time, there's kind of this like, you know, don't put this on my shoulders. Let's put this on everybody's shoulders, which is the same reason he took it to Congress. Yeah. We, then we talked about it a little bit er, earlier. I mean, it's true the world set the red line, but it's also true that he used the phrase right. the red line. That for us would be a red line. Who uh, is us? Us is the United States and you are the buck stops with you. And, that's uh, uh, and he did that uh, uh, a, uh, a year ago. A year ago in July, I believe it yeah. was. Uh, and finally, before we go to a break here, so the president you just mentioned uh, has has uh, has has gone to Congress. Um, it's interesting to me to see a lot of people who who were lining up saying, "We want to vote. We want to vote. Come on, he can't do this on his own." Now they're saying, "Oh my God, <laughs> right. we have to vote." <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, that's amazing little switch that happened there. No kidding. Yeah, it's, uh, as I said yesterday, it's like the dog that finally caught the car. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what the hell do I do with the car? <laughs> it's a big car. <laughs> but I love it because, you know, whether they vote up or down, they're going to have to stand up and be counted right. down. Right, exactly. You know, which is the way it ought to happen right. uh, in this democracy, I think. Uh, all Things Media here with uh, Dylan Byers, senior media reporter for uh, Politico. How do you think the media is handling this uh, build-up to the war in Iraq? Are they just being puppy dogs the way they were under George Bush or being too tough on Barack Obama and turning public opinion? 866-55-PRESS. Let's talk about it here on the Bill Press Show with Dylan Byers. Go mobile with Bill Press. Download podcasts at BillPressShow.com and listen anytime, anywhere. This is the Bill Press Show. Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look! Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. They want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one. Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. 
Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know, you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 69222. Is the Bill Press Show? Hey, <laughs> totally. Bill, hello. We're on the air. Yeah. Oh, At I'm, least you're wait. not like Tucker and fell asleep I'm on the air. Say, I'm like Tucker. <laughs> uh, don't, don't tell Bill we're on the air yet. Just wake me up when we come out of this break. Are we on the air? Hi, <laughs> Bill. Uh, 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 next time I see Tucker, boy, he's got to get it for that. I. I I, I've done a lot of things on the air. I never fell asleep on the air. I mean, do you know anybody? Sometimes I'm going to come in here and <laughs> fall asleep on the air. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's <gonna happen>. you <laughs> it's know, do you know any, anybody else that this, that this ever happened to? I I worked with a guy because you know back in the in the day, what they used to do is they used to send, especially with sports radio, is they used to send these guys out with mm -hmm. these little units that they could dial into the station from their hotel room. So they'd travel with the team, and they'd oh, dial yeah. in from their hotel room, and they'd just be on a phone line, and it's yeah. better yeah. than a regular phone. And there would be these guys who you know, were traveling with sports teams, and you know that they're on the road, they're out late, and they'd be on, and then you'd go to them, and nothing. And they'd just be <laughs> fast asleep or doing the show in their bed, and they'd take a long break, and there's nobody <laughs> there to wake them up. But and here's the only thing. Asleep. I would hope that unlike the his co-hosts on Fox and Friends, that if I were ever to fall asleep... <laughs> They'd that, wake you up. <laughs> that, yeah, my co-hosts or my friends would wake me up rather than those, what those guys would say. <laughs> I got news for you. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Tucker's asleep. <laughs> No, that was fat chance. <laughs> We're going to leave you as asleep until we come back. You got a story there? I do have a story. You remember George Zimmerman, don't you? George Zimmerman, the man who was acquitted of shooting Trayvon Martin. He uh, In the days after the, the trial, the he was busted. shot and killed Trayvon Martin. I yeah, remember him. He was busted for speeding in Texas. Yeah. Uh, right. Well, turns out on Tuesday, he was busted for speeding again in Florida, Tuesday morning, 1030 a.m., uh, he was busted again for speeding in Lake Mary, Florida, which is near Orlando. So he's going 60 miles per hour in a 45 mile per hour zone. I, I have a feeling some bad things are going to happen to this guy, George yeah. Zimmerman. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, uh, uh, Dylan, in the world of media, how's Al Jazeera America doing? What do you hear? It's a great question. So, here, let me tell you a story about Al Jazeera America, which will sum up roughly how, how they're doing so far. Uh, on the day that they launched, I was ready to uh, engage for 24 hours watching the program to do a kind of summary of the entire show. Um, 24 hours? 24 hours, just to see what they were all about. So I, I'm at the office. I'm going to start it. They launch at 3 p.m. Eastern time, and they're not on. We don't get them at the office. So I decide I'm going to come home. So I head home to turn them on, and I've got a pretty good cable package, and yet, lo and behold, mm -hmm. I can't find them there either. So that is the problem that Al Jazeera America is facing. Their ratings, you know, like uh, against current uh, TV, which they bought, they're doing um, 
they're actually they're actually like putting some numbers up on the board that 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 gets them to that level but they need to do a lot more and they also just need to expand their reach in terms of uh, of who actually has the ability to watch them uh, that was of course a problem for current TV right uh, I mean I spent half my time when we were on current TV telling people oh here's what current TV is that's that network that Al Gore started remember and here's how you find it. Right. Right. People didn't know either it existed or how to find it. You at least have, if for the people who actually know you exist, you at least have to be available to them. And so Al Jazeera is going to have to find a way to kind of expand. But expand they are doing, uh, they're doing, seem to be doing uh, an, a, a, a credible amount of promotion and publicity. They're doing, they're doing great promotion. You see their ads everywhere. Yeah, you see yeah. it in magazines. You see it on the sides of buses. You see it. Um, places like that, but but you know w- what really gets these things rolling is getting people talking about it. And you know I've I've gone back and I've watched some of their you know watched some of their work online, and like it's 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 great. They're doing some great reporting. They're doing exactly what they promised. They're doing boots on the ground reporting mm-hmm. from all over the country. Uh, but they need you know they. They, they need to get people talking about them, and nobody's going to start talking about them until they land something big or, or until they get more carry. MSNBC did a big switch uh, recently, brought Ed uh, Schultz back mm-hmm. from weekends where they had exiled him, uh, right. putting him in at 5 o'clock and bouncing uh, Chris Matthews, who used to be live at 5 and taped at 7, to live uh, at 7. Right. Is it too early to tell whether this is working? Yeah, I think it is. I think. What one, do you think was a good move? I think one thing I know is that uh, when Ed Schultz was banished to the weekend, the idea was okay. MSNBC is clearing the path for a newer, younger generation of wonky brown graduate types, like you know Chris, Chris Hayes, Hayes and Rachel and Maddow. Rachel Maddow. <laughs> yeah, um, and Al Sharpton. And I and, <laughs> and I think you know okay, well that kind of you know you need cable. It needs a younger audience. That's the only way that they're going to succeed. Uh, and yet I get all of these emails from. Uh, what I would call, you know, kind of blue collar liberals who are saying like, hey, where, where's the hell is the union voice? Where is that like, you know, mm-hmm. I, we loved it. Um, and, you know, Chris did not do what Chris Hayes did not do well uh, in the APM hour. And then all of a sudden it kind of made more sense bringing back. Also, by moving Chris Matthews to one hour, the, the hope is that you kind of move all of his ratings into one hour and you boost him. Uh, Which will time. in turn boost Chris Which will Hayes. In turn boost yeah. Chris Hayes, and then and then that'll go into Mata, who's their who's their biggest name. Um, and meanwhile, you know, f- you know, five o'clock. You know, if Ed if Ed's audience wants to find him at five o'clock, they will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, seems to be working so far. Yeah, uh, I think it was a good move. I think it's a great move to have Ed back on uh, five days a week. I mean, he does speak to a uh, a blue collar. That is otherwise you know, unrepresented. Otherwise unrepresented. At MSNBC. Certainly on MSNBC, yeah. yeah. Still Vibes, we're just getting started, but we're out of time. Thanks for coming in, man. My All pleasure, right. man. Anytime. Uh, uh, love reading you at politico.com. And check out the new uh, The 10 Best Moments of Crossfire. <laughs> <laughs> See number three. on Twitter at BP Show. This is The Bill Press Show. Stopbullying.gov. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. 
Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know, you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 69222. <laughs> is the Bill Press Show. Okay, looking ahead to the next hour, Evan McMorris Santoro, White House reporter for BuzzFeed. One of my colleagues down at the White House is going to be here for the entire hour as a friend of Bill. Uh, and then we'll be joined by, from the Atlantic magazine, Garance Frankie Ruta. President Obama is now in St. Petersburg. He met with the King and Queen of Sweden before he left Sweden this morning. Now in St. Petersburg, where he has a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the Prime Minister of Japan. Then he moves into the G20 session, uh, participating in a G20 working session this afternoon. Uh, and this evening, there is uh, a big G20, they call it a working uh, dinner. I don't know how much work gets done at those uh, dinners. Uh, the president staying overnight in uh, St. Petersburg tonight. Uh, meetings, more meetings tomorrow, one-on-one -on -one meetings, and then he flies home to Washington tomorrow evening. Back with Evan McMorris, Santoro. This is the Bill Press Show. Visit StopBullying.gov. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Hey, good morning, good morning. It is Thursday, September 5. Great to see you today and welcome. Welcome to the Bill Press Show. Lots going on we need to talk about this morning. Lots you're going to want to comment on this morning. Uh, and that's what we do here. We will uh, bring you all the news of the day, whether it's happening here in our nation's capital, around the country, or around the globe. Tell you what's going on and then give you a chance to uh, sound off about it. You know how you do so. Give us a call at 866-55-PRESS. That is our toll-free number. Army of uh, operators standing by to take your calls. And also, you can join us on Twitter. Just give us your comments on Twitter. That's easy enough from your smartphone. At BP Show. At BP Show is our Twitter handle. And for all of our friends, thousands and thousands of friends on Facebook, it is 
uh, facebook.com slash Bill Press Show. Well, yes, again yesterday, from the U.S. Senate to Stockholm, Syria was the number one issue. The president saying in Stockholm, telling reporters, hey, I'm not the one who drew the red line. The world drew the red line in 1925 against chemical weapons. And now the question is, are we going to do anything or just try to find an excuse not to act? Meanwhile, in Washington, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, a bipartisan vote of 10 to 7, voted to support a military strike against Syria with their eyes on 2016. Both Rand Paul and Marco Rubio voted against it. Speaking of Rand Paul, he's going to New Jersey next week, but Chris Christie will not be there to greet him. Chris Christie says he already has plans to be celebrating his wife's 50th birthday, and she's more important to him than Rand Paul is. <laughs> He's right. That also has <laughs> echoes or whatever, like uh, am- ramifications for 2016. All of that coming up right here. Stay with us on The Bill Press Show. This is The Bill Press Show. stopbullying.gov If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know, you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 69222. Did you see the world differently? Did you celebrate the victory? So today, I state clearly and with conviction, America's commitment to seek the peace and security of a world without nuclear weapons. Did you stand up against our greatest threat?
station, on your radio, on your TV, and online. This is The Bill Press Show. President Obama says it ain't my red line. I'm not the one to do the red line. Somebody else did a long time before I did. Yeah, but he used it. He used that phrase a year ago. Good morning, everybody. What do you say? Here we go. Thursday, September 5. It is the Bill Press Show. We are there on your local progressive talk radio station as we are every morning for the first three hours of the day. Good to have you with us. You can also find us online uh, if you want to video stream the show. Just go to uh, youtube.com slash talker tv t-a-w-k-r dot tv no not dot there i go got it wrong so it's youtube dot com slash talker tv but you have to That's spell it. talker t-a-w-k-r tv uh so there you go and as of next monday we will be live also on free speech tv which you can pick up on uh dish network or direct to tv very excited about that getting back to the little screen as well uh and continuing our uh, radio show coast to coast to bring you up to date on the news of the day and to give you a chance to sound off about it and tell it what it means t- tell us all what it means to you you can do so give us a call at 866-55-PRESS Join us online at Twitter, Twitter at BP Show. That's our BP, uh, Twitter handle at BP Show. And on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Bill Press Show. We tweeted out this morning the top 10 highlights of the old crossfire uh, in light of the new crossfire coming back starting next Monday night. And you will find out number three on that list is me grilling John Boehner. Oh. Uh, Evan McMorris Santoro here with us from uh, the White House, covering the White House for BuzzFeed, my colleague down there. Hey, Evan, how you hey, doing? How are you? Good to see we, you. Uh, we uh, fight for a seat in the back of the room uh, <laughs> every day down at the... Usually you uh, win that fight, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> you get a lot of questions in that uh, I suppose feeders don't always get in. Uh, hey, uh, so this uh, interesting, this, uh, m- what I'm grilling John Boehner about yeah. is the fact uh, that the House... And I, I, I'm not sure whether it was just like this six months or so, but they'd only worked 89 days. And my point was, why the hell should we pay you for every day when you've only worked uh, from that period 89 days? Uh, here is John Boehner. <laughs> this is 19, Evan, 1998. Listen to this. Why should we pay you for more than 89 when you're only working well, 89? 89 days here in Washington. But as you know, we've got constituents at home. We've got issues in our district that we need to deal with. And the fact is, this is classic Washington thinking, that if we're not passing some new big government program or or issuing new regulations, getting into the pockets of our constituents, then we're not working. Now, he said the same thing like two weeks ago, right? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you know, the funny thing about this is that could be a a Tea Party platform plank now, couldn't it, right? Yeah. I mean, you were way ahead of the curve on that idea, (laughs) I think. Don't pay them for when they're not working. Pay them hourly. You know, and Boehner was given the same old BS back then that he did this year. Say, don't don't judge us by how many bills we pass, by how yeah. many bills we repeat. That's awesome. <laughs> it is indeed. We got it. Uh, Peter Ogburn and Dan Henning. Hello, guys. Hey, hey, hey. Good morning. Our team in place with Alicia Cruz, who's uh, standing by on the on the phones. And uh, if we look good online, uh, thank uh, Cyprian Bolding. He's the one in charge of the uh, of the video cams. It was a big night for uh, baseball last night. We're winding up the season finally, but up in Boston, uh, David Ortiz had a chance to step up to the plate for hit number two thousand of his uh, major league career. Here he goes. Two one. Swing. There's a shot hammer to deep center field, back by the wall, and it one hops the green. Here goes Barry to third. He's being waved home. David Ortiz standing at second with career hit number two thousand. Pretty impressive, a right? Did you think that was center, good? The short hop the center field wall. Right, we got it. And the Red Sox it. lead it eleven to four. But that, that game ended up twenty to four, right? Yeah. 20 to 4. Wow. 20 to 4. Three right. touchdowns the Red Sox scored <laughs> yeah, in that game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So That's then Ortiz amazing. comes back to, back up to bat the next time. He's already hit 2,000 hits now, right? All right. 3-1 pitch. Here it comes. Swing. There's a high drive to right center field. This one is long gone. Into the bleachers. Over the Red Sox. Bullpen. David Ortiz with his second home run of the game. Hit number 2,001. 
unbelievable. Yeah, it's nice to hear good news about baseball, right? Good news <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it right. For a change, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But what an impressive night. That's amazing. Night. Yeah. yeah. It was second home run of the game, and then he also got that double. Wow. I'd say he had a good night. Uh, indeed. We got a lot to cover here, and we'll get right to it with Evan McMarcentoro about Syria and other issues. But first, this Dan, of course, is with the, the big full news court of the day. press. Other headlines making news: A rookie NFL player played the "Don't You Know Who I Am" card last weekend. Oh, these are my favorite stories. And he's now looking for a new job. The Indianapolis Colts released young safety John Boyek yesterday after he was arrested for being drunk in public, among other charges. CBS reports when Indianapolis police officers tried to arrest him, he ran and said, quote, you can't arrest me, I'm a Colts player. Oh, oh. yeah. yeah it's, don't dare the cops not to arrest you. <laughs> really, that's, exactly. That is really, that's, that's rule number one. Don't you know who I am? If, you're, if yeah. you're famous, you can maybe get away with some of that stuff, but if you pull that card, like you said, daring the cop, you really leave him no choice. Shaquille O'Neal is taking some heat for signing on to promote Michelle Obama's Let's Move campaign. The Center for Science and the Public Interest says the former NBA star can't have it both ways. He started his Soda Shack Cream Soda Drink line earlier this year, and he, they say he can't do a photo op with the First Lady oh. one day and then sell his disease-promoting <laughs> oh, sodas wow. the next. Each 23-ounce Soda Shack can has two, 270 calories, 17 teaspoons of sugar, comes in vanilla, blueberry, strawberry, and orange. Damn. You should go to BuzzFeed and find our review of the Soda Shack. Uh, oh, I haven't seen uh, that. Of uh, the drinks. We had a kid who doesn't like cream soda, drink them all. And he didn't like them very much, turns out. <laughs> but, you know, this happens a lot. Uh, I mean, remember, Beyonce got in trouble for this, too, because Beyonce, you know, signed on with Let's Move and then also was promoting Pepsi. Mm -hmm. This is, where, you know, sort of where the commerce and the, you know, the, uh, the philanthropy come together. To, uh, all interesting on this stuff with this with this issue. It seems the White House ought to do a better job of vetting these people, right? I mean... Well, I mean, Shaquille O'Neal. I mean, the thing is, Shaquille O'Neal is uh, a guy who exercises. I mean, you know, he's, he's yeah. a good role model for exercise. I think it's just with this other stuff. And the TSA <laughs> is trying to make air travel a little easier. They are expanding their pre-check program from 40 to 100 airports nationwide by the end of the year. If you pre-enroll and pay $85 for five years, you can keep on your shoes, your belt, and your jacket. Keep your laptop in your bag. Keep your liquids in your bag as it goes through the x-ray machine. You just need to submit fingerprints, your social security number, and a background check. And a much quicker breeze through security. This is uh, kind of ironic given all the NSA stuff, right? I mean, they already... I mean. Yeah. <laughs> oh, NSA, NSA, here, take take $100 from me, and then dig into my entire life. <laughs> Federal government. <laughs> Interesting. No, I know. Uh, yeah, that, it's such BS. <laughs> that being TSA said, stuff. having recently gone through the TSA in Orlando. Oh, yeah, that is. <laughs> yes. That is hell. <laughs> if there is a hell on earth, it's TSA <laughs> getting through the checkpoints in Orlando, Florida. This is where my idea of a roving, like roving bars through oh the God. lines. That would be what oh, they need the at an best. airport. This is this is this is my idea. Yeah, <laughs> another free oh, idea. Mm -hmm. So you it's go genius. from one, you just go from one bar to the next. Yeah, like well, the, the well it's like on line. wheels. Like yeah. like it, oh, it no, rides right. around in the it yeah. rides around the line, <laughs> and you're because you're waiting there for forever. Yeah. How much nicer would it be if you had like a nice like a pina colada? It'd be great. <laughs> Hanging out. Genius. That is you know genius. It is. You could also make a lot of money that Damn way. Damn right. Yeah. Damn right. <laughs> That's copyrighted. Yeah. Everybody. Just have the beer yeah. man go through like at a ball game. <laughs> yeah. Beer man, beer man. Exactly. Uh, been a quite, kind of a quiet week at the White House this week. We haven't had many briefings <laughs> at all. <laughs> Not one. No, we haven't had many briefings, no, but I wouldn't say it was... Well, right, from, <laughs> from that respect. So the White House, I mean, obviously, they're on the, the, the full court press, right? I mean, trying to sell uh, this military strike in Syria... How do you think they're doing so far? Well, uh, you know, the audience that they're trying to sell to is really, they really have two audiences right now. They need to sell this to the American people, and they need to sell this to the Congress. And based on the reporting out of Congress uh, from my colleague Kate Nocera and John Stanton, our, uh, our, Kate our Hill was, reporters. Uh, Kate, who was in yesterday. Right? Friend of the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, before yesterday. It isn't going fantastically well in Congress. Uh, and based on what we've seen from polling, it isn't going fantastically well with the American people either. So, um, you know, I think that this is, is, is a fascinating issue because the president has done something that I think was part of his sort of original idea when he ran for president, this sort of taking away some of the executive powers, going back to Congress a bit. He's done it. He, he got some praise for it pretty much universally. But now that he's given them the, you know, the power to authorize, you're seeing uh, a potential for a political loss for him. 
uh, on this. But he got to Senate Foreign Relations Committee yesterday. That's correct. Uh, bipartisan vote, 10 to 7. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's certainly not going to be unanimous. Do you think, and and uh, and clearly we know members of Congress, I mean, they, they, they spout off a lot, they talk a lot. I think some of them secretly wish they didn't have to vote. They would rather just talk without having to vote, but now they do have to vote. In, at, the, at, the, at, at the end of the day, mm. Do you think that they're going to uh, turn down a, a, a military strike and basically uh, let's Bashar al-Assad get away with this? You know, I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't know. This is the first one of these I've ever covered. Uh, there hasn't been one of these in quite a long time. No. Um, no, no well, not since the war, the war uh, in Iraq yeah, resolution. Yeah, and I, I was not a reporter then. Uh, it's a it's a fascinating uh, it's a fascinating sort of. Uh, piece of Washington politics going on right now because because you have I agree like you have a lot of Republicans who, uh, who are saying you know this president wants to do this as a national security issue we have the intelligence we're going to go you know we should stand by the president or look weak as a country um, and then you have a lot of Republicans now obviously who are in the sort of uh, wary of Obama, uh, you know, at best uh, caucus, and so it's a very interesting test of all that. I I don't know where it ends up. I think the White House is still very confident. Um, they're very confident that they're going to get this. We saw the president yesterday, just you know, yeah. un- no uncertain terms. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna get this vote. I'm very confident I'm gonna get this vote. If if we don't, it's just a huge loss of face to everybody. Um, and you know, I've been doing a lot of reporting on uh, the progressive response to this, and I wouldn't be so presumptuous as to know more about that community than you guys on this show. But I found a fascinating uh, split in that community on this. That there actually is, there's not one voice. You have like Move On and Progressive Change Campaign Committee are starting lobbying Congress uh, to uh, vote Turn against the down. authorization. Right. But then you see like Howard Dean is in support of action, and his group is sort of staying on the sidelines in terms of lobbying Congress. So if you take that one community of politics and sort of blow it out, I think that that's where we are. We're in a place where a lot of new lines are being uh, put together, are being drawn. A lot of new coalitions are being formed. And so when it all shakes out, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with the vote. But really, it's, it doesn't fall along partisan lines, really. No. And then you have this uh, reflected, I think, the very same sort of split in the Republican Party, obviously. Yes. You've got the Rand Pauls of this world. Uh, no. You know, this is too much big government again, and we can't afford it, versus uh, a John McCain or a Bill Crystal or even a Lindsey Graham who are saying we can't let this stand. We have to take we have to uh, respond. Yeah, John McCain, I think, is is becoming is an ally of the president on this. I mean, pretty. I mean, he's support. I mean, he, he didn't vote for the Senate authorization because uh, he didn't think it went far enough. But I think that it's pretty clear he's going to vote for it in the Senate on the Senate floor. So. What um, is your sense? I know what the White House is saying about the president's authority to um, to go forward with a strike, even if Congress were to vote no. What do you think the reality is if the if Congress were to turn it down? Well, you know, they they just will not say what happens if Congress turns it down. Uh, I mean, we saw that fascinating thing in England where the parliament voted down the authorization and David Cameron, who, again, is actually facing a tough re-election campaign. So he, so mm-hmm. he's a bit of a different situation yep. than Obama is. Uh, David Cameron was like, well, people spoke. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do it. Um, but the White House uh, are very careful about saying, look, we're not giving up any power here. We're not, we're not giving up any legal authority. We can do this whenever we want. We're asking for authorization. We're going to get it. And they won't say what happens if they don't. I mean, Obama wouldn't say it yesterday. Uh, White House people won't say it uh, behind the scenes. So I talked to them about it then. Um, and uh, it, y- we've heard some rumblings from the State Department, you know, some reporting that, like, they think that they're going to go ahead no matter what. So, you know, this is this is the real question. But, again, it's a question that the White House thinks we're never going to get to. My, uh, my take on it is there is no way the president would move by exec- with executive authority without support of the Congress. No way. No way. No matter what they say today. I know why they're saying it mm-hmm. today, because they want to uh, maintain that possibility and that authority. But I think it'd be, uh, having gone to Congress, I think he's stuck with it, whatever they say. Uh, eight six. But you're right. We've tried to get that answer out of Jay Carney, and... It's not happening. Not, not happening. coming out. Nope. Nope. 866 press uh, your calls, your questions... Uh, Evan McMar Santoro here with us. Uh, what do you think? Will Congress go? Should they go to support this uh, strike, which the president definitely would like to do, to uh, teach Bashar al-Assad a lesson about use of chemical weapons? This is the Bill Press Show.
This is the Bill Press Show. Here we go, 25 minutes after the hour. We're talking with Evan McMorris Santoro here in the studio. He's a friend of Bill this hour, a good friend from the White House. Uh, covers the White House for BuzzFeed at the buzzfeed.com. Uh, just go to news, go to politics, you'll find uh, Evan McMorris Santoro. He's always stirring things up. I mean, now, p- poor Al Gore. I mean, come on. You know, he's got his $200 million. Just let him enjoy his money. Instead, you got to... Take him on. Well. In your latest piece, a long piece, about you think Al Gore has lost credibility on the climate change issue? Well, uh, I I don't think. I mean, it's not my. It's not oh. me saying it. It's oh, uh, it's, I, I it's, it's, it's 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 the very society. Yes. It's not my red, it's not line. My red I line. I didn't draw the red line. No, no. Uh, no my, this, this is one of those stories. This is, this is on BuzzFeed right now. Uh, if you want to go to find it, you just look in BuzzFeed politics. You see a big picture of uh, Al Gore's head as a melting iceberg. <laughs> it's pretty uh, great. My colleague Ruby Kramer and I um, were. Uh, it was in those newsroom conversations. Whatever happened to Al Gore's climate change group? Uh, And it turned out we're not the only ones asking that question. A lot of people in uh, the climate change community are asking that question. Uh, When Gore... Has he given up on the issue? I don't think so. I think it's I think it's very clear this is actually an issue that's still important to him. I mean, we we saw him do that big interview with the Washington Post just right after he sold Current. Um, But this is a question sort of about effectiveness. This is one of those stories about effectiveness. Uh, That when he started the organization, the idea was to sort of create the Apple computer of climate change, that you had sort of this existing climate change world of climate change activism hadn't really worked. It was very partisan. People didn't like it. He came in with a huge amount of money and a big fancy new logo and and, and these ads, if people recall them, featuring you know Nancy Pelosi and uh, Gingrich on one love seat yeah, talking about yeah. how great climate change is and how, they needed, <laughs> how we need to fix climate change. Um, and that was sort of the big idea, was sort of create this new rallying point around climate change. And then what happened was... Uh, they switched to being a lobbying group and uh, didn't really work very well for them. And now you find they're like they're just shadow of themselves. They're a very small operation now, voting just on digital operations. I mean, all the lofty goals really haven't come through. And a lot of folks who are sort of more mainstream uh, in the climate change movement that we talk to, uh, no, no, few would go on the record about Gore. They still like Gore enough they wouldn't say on the record, but sort of in private conversations would say that they think that Gore would be better served if he maybe used his prowess to raise money for existing groups that are already out there doing stuff better than his group is. So that's sort of where it is. Hmm. Uh, I must say, I haven't heard from Al Gore about anything other than current TV and Al Jazeera in the last year. Have we? No. I mean, I don't know that he's had... He's been focused on dealing with a lot of uh, celebrities. We opened the piece with it, the trip he took with Jason Mraz to Antarctica. So, I mean, that's sort of where he's been doing stuff. Yeah. Um, be interesting to see uh, where, you know, how he emerges out, out of this, right? What is the next, the next, um, I don't know, act for Al Gore? <laughs> right. We'll, we'll be see. joined. Um, Evan this and I beg around. This is the Frankie Bill Ruben. Press Show.
This is the Bill Press Show. Yeah, public intellectual. Hey, here we uh, here we go. We're on the air. Thirty three minutes. <laughs> 33 Way minutes to go, after, Evan. <laughs> what, <laughs> 33 minutes after the hour here on the uh, Bill Press Show this Thursday morning, uh, September 5. Great to see you today. Thank you for joining us. We're coming to you live from our nation's capital, our studio in Capitol Hill, brought to you today by the International Association of Machinists, the good men and women of the Machinist Union, you bet, under President Tom Buffenbarger, sharpening America's edge on the global economy, bringing America's manufacturing base back. Find out more about what they're up to, their good work, at goiam, G-O-I-A-M dot org, President Obama in uh, St. Petersburg, where you know he's going to be doing some lobbying today, one-on-one uh, with members of the uh, G20, trying to line up some international support uh, for what he believes is a necessary retaliatory strike against Syria for the use of chemical weapons. Meanwhile, the debate continues here in Washington, D.C. Evan McMorris-Santoro, uh, we've got it covered here, both ends of Pennsylvania Avenue this half hour. Evan McMorris-Santoro covering the White House for BuzzFeed. Here is a friend of Bill, Evan. Uh, talking to the uh, as well. Joining us now, yes, uh, from the, who covers the Congress, mostly. Uh, senior editor for The Atlantic, Garance Frankie Ruda. Hey, Garance, nice to see you. Thanks for having me Thanks for on. joining us. So the vote yesterday, let's start there with the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Interesting, bipartisan vote. Democrats split, Republicans split, but uh, a step up for the president, right? Well, it's a step ahead, and I think, you know, the... If an authorization for use of force is going to go forward anywhere, it's going to go forward in the, in the Senate. Um, you know, Harry Reid is behind it. And I think, you know, there's enough hawkish Democrats in the Senate and hawkish Republicans to take this forward. And I think that's the sort of most interesting thing about this is that, um, you know, the president is making common cause with some of the people whose uh, foreign policy leanings and politics he would have very much disagreed with at other points in his, in his history. Frank, uh, I mean... Um uh, Rand Paul, Rand Paul, and Marco Rubio, surprise, surprise, both voting against it, with 2016 in mind, huh? Yeah, I mean Rubio was a surprise. Rubio, it was sort of a, a he was a kind of a hawkish guy coming into. He wasn't a libertarian on this sort of stuff coming into the Senate, and this is sort of we're seeing a lot of of Marco Rubio. Not to get all political about it again, but we're seeing a lot of Marco Rubio now sort of pulling back uh, into the right wing after uh, the uh, immigration stuff, which has not made him any friends uh, in the GOP sort of conservative base. But on that point, Grants, I mean, and, and Evan and I were talking about this a little bit earlier. There are all kinds of reasons for supporting a strike or not supporting a strike. But a lot of the talk is political, and a lot of the thinking is political, right? Either how is this going to impact my re-election campaign, or how is it going to impact my chances in 2016, or will this make Barack Obama look good or look bad, or, you know... There's a certain amount of that, but I think what you're really also seeing is a reflection of public opinion in the country, which is that this is something that's come out of the blue. There's a war been going on in Syria for two and a half years now. People have not been paying attention to it. A substantial portion of people are undecided as to what they even think. Uh, public opinion is, is somewhat flexible. We've seen since even Obama spoke on Saturday, a swing of 10 points in his favor amongst Democrats, at least on public opinion in terms of going forward with an intervention. Um, this is sort of sprung on people all of a sudden, and people are trying to sort of sort out what they think. This is why this is going to be a conscience vote in the Senate and in the House. Uh, people are just, it's a very tough call. In terms of the politics, Rand Paul, I think we could have safely predicted, was always going to vote against that. He is against foreign interventions. He is against foreign aid. And I think what's interesting with him is that he'd been sort of trying since the start of the year to sort of get in slightly better graces with the pro-Israel community, especially on the right, mm -hmm. uh, which is very mm -hmm. tight with the conservative evangelical community on the right. And yeah, I think his right. stance here has completely busted that up. Um, and people it, are just sort of, point. Yeah. you know, and so I think, uh, you know, he's he's reflecting public opinion. He's reflecting a Tea Party sentiment that is against intervention, but it sort of puts him at odds with a certain amount of the sort of pro-Israel, pro-intervention community on the right. And it's worth noting there are some actual far conservatives in the in the Congress that are bo that are publicly for this. Uh, Tom Cotton in Arkansas, who's a very very right wing guy. 
uh, one of these sort of libertarian type guys. He's going uh, probably he's running for Senate in Arkansas. He came out very publicly for this action. So even that wing of the party of the GOP isn't completely speaking with one voice on this. Uh, the president and the White House and John Kerry have, have, have made gone out of the way to point out, look, this is not another Iraq. Just forget about that. We're here. There's no question. We have weapons of mass destruction here, and there's no question who used them. Uh, this this intelligence is absolutely bona fide. You can you can count on it. At the same time, there are echoes of Iraq in this, aren't there? In terms of Garans, you mentioned public opinion, uh, Evan. That 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 is where, I mean, the people are a lot of people are skeptical because they were fooled. Uh, hoodwinked on Iraq, and they don't want to be hoodwinked again. Well, right? and I think another echo, and I think a big concern people have, another echo of Iraq might be that there, it's it's not entirely clear what the win here is, what the exit strategy is, what the end of this is, right? I mean, you fire some missiles, uh, Assad uses more chemical weapons, what do you do? Fire more missiles? I mean, what you know, once you sort of step foot the first time and say you're sort of drawing these red lines and standing up for uh, you know specific ideas and, pre- and preventing things from happening, um, it's hard to figure out sort of where that ends all the time. I think people are concerned about that. The Obama administration's made it very clear they want a limited thing. They do want to get rid of Assad, but they only want to do that with diplomatic stuff. They don't want to mm-hmm. do you know use forces to get rid of that. But I think that that is where some of the concern is, is this sort of this idea of this uh, just sort of you know escalating and escalating and escalating. Once you you know get the ball rolling, the ball is rolling. There is a war weariness, isn't there? There's absolutely a war weariness. Uh, We've spent a huge amount of money and our military is exhausted. I mean, they have been fighting the longest war in American history over in Afghanistan. And uh, it's it's taken a a huge toll on the military as well as on people's sentiment about going into a military intervention. But I don't think this is going to be like Iraq for a couple of reasons. The first of which is that I think the president would much rather not propose doing a military intervention Mm -hmm. in Syria. I think there was a pre-existing bias towards doing something about Iraq and the Bush administration. And because of that, the intelligence was cooked in order to sell a case for war. Here, the intelligence is what it is. And I think the sell... Selling it is is rather reluctant. Yeah. Um, So there's that. We're not proposing basically occupying a foreign country. I mean, Americans make terrible colonists, right? right? Um, It's not something we're good at, and it's not something anybody's really good at if you look at the history of colonial interventions around the world. Um, And we basically occupied Iraq for um, quite some time, and that was the real disaster. In terms of military interventions, the American military is unparalleled in the world. We can win any war we put our mind to on a strictly military perspective. Mm -hmm. But the question is, what is our goal? in Syria. And that's what I think a lot of people are asking. What is our goal? Do we have a larger goal? Do we just want to send a message? I mean, I could see if we, as the president has been saying, degraded, uh, which is such a weird euphemism (laughs) for bombing (laughs) um, uh, Assad's uh, forces. I mean, Many of the civilian deaths have been taking place by uh, bombs dropped by jets. If we took out the the airports and we took out a certain part of the air force uh, from the Assad regime, that would actually shift the balance of power in the conflict um, and remove some of the threat to civilians. There's a broader question of, you know, what do you do to try and humanize this war a little bit on either side? There's also a lot of reports of... um, the slaughter of prisoners of war on the uh, anti-Assad forces is the front page story today in the New York Times. And, you know, that's also a violation of the rules of war. You're not supposed to kill your prisoners. And so there's there's a lot of bad stuff happening there. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's it's less and less a case of the white hats versus the black hats uh, in in Syria. I mean, I think the white hats are still the rebels, uh, but there's there's the black hats among the white hats. That's the uh, that's the problem. And the and in the end, at the end of the day, next week. Now Nancy Pelosi is now uh, John J- John Boehner says there'll be a vote next week. Nancy Pelosi this morning is saying uh, th- maybe two weeks from now uh, we might have two two weeks of debate. God forbid. <laughs> uh, but at the end of the day, w- what's your gut tell you, up or down? Oh, I don't. I honestly think this is really. 50-50. I don't know. Anywhere at this point. I really won't. I, I can't make a call about this. Really? It's so many different things are happening. You had the leadership uh, of the entire leadership of the of the, uh, of the House, you know, pushing for this. But that doesn't mean uh, anything. They can deliver. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything in this modern House. What's your gut tell you, Ron? I think it's a tough sell. 
uh, in the House. Um, they are not Senate. Uh, Senate goes. I'm sorry. Senate. Does I think the Senate. Obama can probably get it through the Senate. Okay. Um, and I think in that regard, it'll be a little bit like the. Uh, vote but even on with Nancy Pelosi and John Boehner, can't get the House. Both of them for it. If, can't if, get if they wanted to whip this, they could have, but they decided not to. This is a conscience vote, and the opinion that people are hearing is against. This has basically been sprung on the American people. Depends on how long the debate goes in the House. The longer the debate goes on the House, the more, mm, I think, perfect. the higher the chance of passage. Really? Mm. Huh. Interesting. Because it gives people time to sort of absorb the situation and figure out what they think about it. Well, what people are asking Obama, I mean, what, the, what, what leaders of Congress are saying is they want Obama to do the Oval Office address and sell it. They want I, Obama to whip it. Yep. You know, they want him to go to the people, explain what he wants to do, and then use that to pressure Congress. And, and the White I, House has yet not given us any indication that there will be, uh, whether it's the Oval Office sure. address or an East Room address or Rose Garden or out at some public arena somewhere, uh, they've not indicated yet that a joint that's, session, maybe that, yeah. that that's or joint session that that's planned, but it seems to me um, they're going to have to do something, something like that. We'll uh, take a quick break and come back uh, and talk about another voice uh, that has been heard in this uh, build up to a possible military strike in Syria, and that is former Defense Secretary Bob Gates. First time he's spoken out on any issue since he retired from the Defense Department. Evan McMorris Santoro and Garance Frankie Ruda back on the Bill Press Show. Follow us on Twitter at BP Show. This is the Bill Press Show.
is the Bill Press Show. Here we go, 12 minutes now before the top of the hour. Uh, in studio with us from the Atlantic, senior editor Garance Frankie Ruda. And here is a friend of Bill this entire hour. You tired of him yet? <laughs> I hope not. White House reporter from BuzzFeed, Evan McMorris Santoro. I think we know where you come down on that question. <laughs> yeah, no. All right. We love having you in here as a friend of Bill. So I mentioned uh, Bob Gates, former defense secretary, uh, putting out a statement this morning saying, in part, I strongly urge the Congress, both Democrats and Republicans, to support the president's request for authorization to use force in Syria. It's pretty well respected on both sides of the aisle. Evan. Served uh, in both the Bush administration and the Obama administration. I mean, this is a this is a very powerful sort of bipartisan voice on this. So, in, to the extent that people are looking for any other voices, you know, it's, well, gee, if he's for it, then yeah. I got to think and, it through. And, and Nicholas It'll, Kristof, the New York Times today came out in favor of intervention as so, well. And so, so uh, there you go, left yeah, and right, right. Yeah, I know. Yeah. This is this is the ultimate strange bad fellows com- uh, division of of, of opinion. Um, we, you mentioned uh, just before the break um, the, the comment that I've heard most often from our listeners and viewers is if we do this, then Bashar Assad might do this, and that's why we can't strike because we can't take that chance. It's a point that Congress uh, Senator um, Chris Murphy from Connecticut made yesterday in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Everyone has come to different conclusions. Uh, I simply believe that the risks of action today outweigh the risks of inaction. So if we do this, then he might strike, uh, Bashar Assad might uh, lob a missile into Syria, I mean into uh, Israel or into Turkey or use chemical weapons again. Uh, is that a legitimate argument? Where do you think that goes? You know, it's it's absolutely a concern, but I think one thing that is worth bearing in mind is that Israel's actually conducted four bombing raids inside Syria already without <laughs> retaliation. So, um, they've previously fought a number of conflicts with Hezbollah and have uh, repulsed them rather effectively. Um, and so I think to the extent that the Israeli leadership says, look, we're ready for whatever's coming, um, they've been working on developing a, a missile shield uh, with U.S. Um, assistance. You know, I think uh, if that's the country we're talking about, they seem to feel like they're going to do a solid for the United States government right now and say, look, this is something that we will support. To a certain extent, Evan, you never know what might happen if you take any action that's right. whatsoever, correct? Well, and this, yeah. and this, I mean, th- th- this, is th- this is the concern, I think, from a lot of people that are uh, opposed to the war, is that once you start down the road of war, you're on the road, and then where it ends, you don't really know, right? But Agrant's made a good point uh, as well about, about APAC uh, supporting this uh, intervention as well. So, so you have both Israel has already done some action, as you said, and also uh, the Israeli lobby uh, in the United States is pushing for it, too. So And every major not Jewish group, in the, uh, the, the really big ones, the centrist and on the right, have come out in favor of some form of intervention. Even J Street although they have not endorsed the military intervention, has said, you know, condemned in very harsh terms uh, what's gone on uh, in Syria. Dave is calling uh, one of our uh, listeners out here on AM760 uh, from Denver, Colorado. Hi, Dave. You have a question or a comment? Thank you. Yes, I do. Uh, I think there are two things that haven't been discussed. Uh One is these aren't surgical strikes or neutralizations or anything else. We are intentionally, with really premeditation, going out and slaughtering thousands of people. I'd like these designers or planners to put a number on the, on the number of people we're going to kill and maim. And then, two, I'd like them to address the level of really hypocrisy when Israel, you, you, when Israel used these banned chemical weapons, white phosphorus specifically, in the Gaza Strip when they murdered those people in their concentration camp of the Gaza Strip. All right, all right. we've got your questions. Uh, let's start with the second. I don't know anything about uh, uh, Israel's use of chemical weapons. Um, uh, I'm sure if they had, uh, the, the world would have been as appalled as they are. I mean, th- this is not some, some nations can use them and some can't, right? I mean, the idea on chemical weapons is nobody, nowhere, no how, Correct. without consequence. Well, they have been used in the past. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, Iraq um, used them, and the United States knew right. about it. And so, right. I mean, I mean, but yeah. I mean, Israel will not get a pass, is what I'm saying. Uh, so, I, 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 I just think the call is wrong on that one. How about the surgical strike? There is that's another that's another one of these people. Say, well, if we do this, you know, they're going to move civilians around some of these military targets, and they're they're going to be collateral 
deaths. No, no way of escaping it. Is that a reason for not going? Or grants? Uh, if you um, are opposed to it, it's absolutely a reason for not doing it. If you are in support of it, it's part of what comes along with doing a military intervention. And the military certainly knows. I mean, they will try to to, 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 to focus this. Yeah, and it is the case that I think, you know, we had reports that Assad regime was moving around uh, prisoners, political prisoners, uh, to put them into likely strike, uh, strike American strike. It's not a crazy uh, fear to have. I mean, we've seen this happen before. I mean, in Kosovo, right, we bombed the Chinese embassy. Yeah. Uh, in Afghanistan, once when we did uh, some uh, cruise missiles, we blew up, I think, a, a medicine factory. Uh, I mean, this is a messy thing to do. War is a messy thing to do. So, I mean, it, Gratz is entirely right. If you support this, then you understand that sort of like this collateral damage is, is part of the part of the deal, but it really has happened with American weapons, and it has uh, led to the wrong people being killed. You know, it seems like uh, we've already been talking about it forever, and yet we're really just getting started, uh, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, I'd and like we're we're done. We're out of time. Oh, Sorry. Uh, yeah, save that thought, because we want to get you both back here again soon. Evan McMorris and Tara Carranz, thank you, Ruta. Thank you so much for coming in. I have this a parting, parting is the Bill up. Press Show. Shot with Bill Press. This 
is The Bill Press Show. Just a final thought about Syria. Granted, this is not an easy issue, but whatever decision individuals, individual members of Congress make, one thing is clear. No Republican should vote against striking Syria just uh, in order to make President Obama look weak. And no Democrat should vote no only to make Obama look strong. Two other arguments we hear. One, if it can't be the UN, UN, why does it have to be the United States? Why? Because we're the world's only superpower. And two, if we do strike, we never know what Bashar al-Assad will do next. That's true. But we know what he will do if we don't do anything. He's already proven that. He will use chemical weapons again. To me, that's the bottom line. As much as we may dislike military power, sometimes you just have to do the right thing and... Hope for the best. Go out and have a good one, folks. Come back here and see us again tomorrow this morning. This is the Bill Press Show.